Tire, Norder Supply, Great Western Tire, Scott Community Foundation, Scott Recreation Commission, Giftologist, Platinum H Insurance, Scott City Ice Center, Next Tech Wireless, Lot Motors, United Wireless, Lewis Automotive Group, Precision Ag and Seed, A Plus Aviation, Perfect Auto Detailing, Miller Veterinary Clinic, State Farm Major Michael Trout, Fro Heating and Cooling, Plain Jans, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hugh and Berta Benz, American Implement, Burtis Motors, Fairlip Feed Yard, Pro Adjuster, First National Bank, Scott Co-op, Scott County Hospital, Scott Pro, Security State Bank, Western Kansas Insurance, Wheatland Electric, Scott City Booster Club, Security State Bank, Land Legacy Real Estate, Park Lane Nursing Home, and Farm Bureau Agent Neil Baker. Welcome to the Scott Co-op Pre-Game Show. When it comes to success, it's all about teamwork. Whether it's the Scott City Beavers or your farming operation, it's teamwork that counts. You can count on the entire Scott Co-op team to make your operation successful. Here's Adam Kadavy. And a good Friday evening here. Welcome to Cimarron High School for Beaver Basketball here tonight as it is round two between the Scott City Beavers and the Blue Jays of Cimarron here in GWAC play. This doubleheader counts toward the standings in the league here. Both the girls and boys teams for both sides come in 0-1 in conference play. On the girls' side, Cimarron, they are at 10-2 uh, and two on the year and 0-1 and in the league. They have won five in a row. They rallied from a nearly 12-0 deficit on Monday night and the Hoisington winner jammed to knock off the host school Hoisington Lady Cardinals 33-21 to in a game where they um, trailed uh, for most of that ball game shut out uh, Hoisington in the fourth quarter. On the other side, Scott City looking to snap a little two-game losing streak and get to 500 with a big schedule coming up in late January and February. They're 6-7 and seven on the year, 0-1 in the league after a 59-50 loss to the Huguenot and Lady Eagles on Tuesday night at home in league play. On the other side, the boys game should be another good one as well. Scott City looking to complete the season sweep of the Blue Jays. The Beavers enter tonight's game with a 6-7 and seven record, 0-1 in the conference, looking to break a three-game losing streak after they lost 69-36 to 36 in a game where it was much closer than in the final score indicated. It was a seven-point game with about three and a half minutes to go third quarter before Hugo had made a huge run and never looked back. Scott City sees Cimarron tonight really struggling out of the gate. They have lost eight of the last nine games after starting the year off 2-0. They're 3-8 on the air of the Blue Jay boys at 0-1. They have not played in eight days. They did not play their seventh place game last Saturday because of the weather. That has been rescheduled for February at the Hoisington Tournament. But their last outing was eight days ago when they lost 59-49 to the Lacrosse Leopards. More to come here in your pregame show. Once again, presented by Scott Cope. We'll come back after this timeout. We'll hear comments from a coach, Amy Felker. We'll do that in two minutes. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. High tech and often. Chambliss Roofing has you covered since 1993. They are prepared for any job like maintenance and repair, an upgrade, or a new install. They provide the best customer service for residential and commercial roofing. Looking to upgrade to a metal roof? They can do that as well. If you have any existing damage or are looking for a roof that will last for years to come, don't wait to get a free consultation. Visit their website, shamblessroofing.com, by scanning the QR code on screen now. market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealership in Scott City. 
For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Shapland Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Shapland Real Estate a call or visit our website today. effort there in the fourth quarter you know we, we just got to take care of the ball and we we got to be more active and get open a little bit better so we have entry passes into our offense um, second half we were a lot more op, uh, active which made us get the easier passes which then let us get to some easy baskets and found the girls in the baseline and underneath and just got our shooters open so you know we just got to take care of the ball a little bit better in the first half and not let them uh, make some runs on us. He had uh, good production. I thought the rebounding was pretty good again. And do you feel like they were getting some more high quality shots there in the game? You know, I I do believe that our shot quality is a lot better. Um, the girls are having more confidence when they're open to take that shot, and we're knocking those things down. Our shooting percentage is going a lot better than it was. Um, you know, defensively and rebounding, our our defense is strong. We're just you know some of the teams we're playing are just some tough tough teams, and they've got a lot of. Uh, athletic, uh, great shooting weapons and that kind of stuff, which makes it hard to defend. But for the most part, we don't give uh, most teams very many second shot opportunities, which is uh, good for us because then, you know, we can create something on the offensive end. Is it weird now that you don't have uh, another game with Hugoton because it's been two back-to-back -back games? I, it is going to be crazy, and, you know, and then there's no way to hook up to them in uh, postseason. So, you know, we're finally done with them. And But, you know, it, it's nice to be able to say that we played against some of those girls, you know, and they're going to do great things. You know, it's just... It's it's just hard and it's uh it's exciting that we at least got one of the one of the three but you know we're just gonna keep working. Once again, Coach Amy Felker here in the pregame tonight. Scott City takes on Cimarron. This is a game where you're a little short-handed first time around, but really gave it a good effort. Uh, lost by eight to Cimarron back on the on the 13th of December. There, as you take a look at this matchup here, uh, uh, they won their tournament championship. They only scored 33 points, but had to rally in their tournament game against Hoisington on Monday nights. And what do you see with this uh, Cimarron team uh, this time around? You know, I, I, they're going to be a lot the same. Um, they are foul prone, and so if we can get a couple of their big girls in foul trouble and then we make some runs on them, you know, that's going to be to our advantage. Um, we've got to really attack the inside and get some easy baskets there, which then will create our outside presence. You know, we just got to be ready for their 1-3-1 uh, one, uh, defense and their man-to-man. -man. You know, we just got to be able to react and take care of the ball and get it around Michaela's long long arms i know the story really in the last game uh, had to be uh, the the rebounds and i know that over the last two game, days of practice leading into tonight that really had to be probably the biggest point of emphasis you know we have we have been talking about we've got to make sure we block those big girls out and not let them push us under the basket and that's what was happening in the, the first game um and you know i've been really proud of the way we've rebounded the last few weeks and so i think we've really got that started to figure out and understand the idea of really pushing somebody out and getting those rebounds and trying to get some over the back calls. So I, I just think that uh, we will win the rebound um, advantage this year, this week and uh, we're going to be ready. Should be a good one as Scott City faces Cimarron tonight round two. Coach Amy Felker here in the pregame and coach thanks for the time and good luck to you guys. Thanks Adam. That was Scott City Lady Beaver coach Amy Felker. Your pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Hugh and Berta Benz in Scott City and Leota. More to come in your pregame show. We'll have a breakdown of the match and bring you starters, keys of the game, and the tip-off after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball.
you describe your career? Rewarding. It's, it's more than just a job. Great vacation, great sick pay. Great opportunities to move forward. Good work environment, good people. Always something new, always something different. Every day you learn something new. Their commitment to education is second to none. They pay for my school. I, I love it because we're all be one big happy family. 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 It's like a family. Grow your career with American Implement and John Deere. Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. He's coming in here to tonight real quickly on the girls' side. Right now it's Goodland in the top spot at 13-0. They have a road trip uh, to Russell tonight. Uh, and uh, Cimarron is at 10-2. Two, uh, two and a half games back at Goodland. Holcomb at 9-3. Colby at 9-4. That's a big, intriguing matchup there at the Colby Event Center tonight between those two because uh, those uh, two teams, well, they could flip-flop in the, the sub-state standings between being a 3 or a 4. Lake and right now the number five spot at eight and three. Scott City at actually they're actually the number four spot a half game back of Holcomb. Uh, Kobe's right now in the number five spot at nine and four. Scott City's uh, put themselves in the sixth spot at six and seven. They have a three game lead on both Larned and Southwestern Heights who are both three and ten. On the boys side coming into tonight Colby at eleven and two. They have a two and a half game lead on Holcomb. Lakin right now kind of hovering in that number three spot at six and five. Goodland at six and six. Scott City at six and seven. Learned at four and nine. Cimarron at three and eight. And Southwestern Heights at one and 12. So that's how that all sets up there. And uh, so uh, that's how the breakdown of the substate is. As of it, if it were seated tonight, Scott City would be heading to Holcomb on the girls, and the boys would be headed to uh, Goodland. But there's a lot to uh, be played for here over the next couple of weeks. This is really kind of the continuation, the start of decision time here for the postseason run. Anyways, let's break down this matchup here tonight between Scott City and Cimarron on the girls' side. The first meeting was won 52-44 by Cimarron back on the 13th of December in Scott City in a game where the Lady Blue Jays had their first bounce-back win of the year. And uh, 
had their first or their fourth victory. They were led by Taryn Jan, 16, Caitlin Sunday, 15, Michaela Miller, 12. Those are three seniors there for Cimarron. And uh, really it was Jans who really set them up big there in that first quarter and uh, never looked back in that ball game. And Scott City was without Brooks Stryan in that game. Well, she's back on the court here tonight, and that could make a big difference here especially on the glass. Cimarron owned the glass on Scott City that first time around, and I think it's going to be a much different situation there tonight with especially Strine back. But, you know, talking with Coach Felker, she really feels like her team is much improved from where they were in mid-December. There was a lot of new faces on the court for Scott City that hadn't had a significant amount of varsity time, even though they were 3-1 and one at the time, but still uh, the competition was turned up at that moment there with, uh, you had Liberal along the way there, and then you had Cimarron and Colby right before the Christmas, and Goodlin right before the Christmas break, but this is a team they're starting to shoot the ball more confident, and, and I know Erica and, Bo and uh, Brooke have shot the ball really well, but you're starting to see good shots like high percentage shots. Uh, you're starting to get those really from uh, a couple of the sophomores there in Avery Lewis and Kendall Gentry and also Cheyenne Kramer as well. And so that's a big uh, pressure reliever, I guess you could say, for uh, the, the Scott City's top two scorers, Brooke Shrine and Erica Felker, who have had a really good season once again here this year, all, putting up all league type of numbers. And uh, so uh, this is going to be a big game here tonight for Scott City. Their point production has really gone up pretty well. They average 45.7 points a game. They've increased that quite a bit. They, their assist, by the way, is what's been pretty impressive. They had 17 assists assist against Huguenin on Tuesday night on 20 field goals. They were really good distributing the ball there against the Lady Eagles and even despite the loss. But what really killed them and especially as well in the first game as well against Cimarron were turnovers. On Tuesday night the Lady Beavers committed 21 turnovers and had 17 against Cimarron the first time around. In order to beat Cimarron you just cannot turn the ball over that much. The Blue Jays of Cimarron, they had an interesting time the other day against uh, Hoisington on Monday. They've won five in a row. They won the Hoisington Winter Jam their first time. They've won that in the three years they've been in there. And, of course, the third year in the Great West Activity Conference. But they trailed 12 to nothing after the first quarter. That's right. Cimarron did not score a, four, uh, score a point. And that was due to large part of getting a lot of foul trouble. Michaela Miller had two. Also, Kaylin Sonday, their post player, had two. Uh, fouls and that really hurt, hampered him in the first half. They trailed by one going in the fourth quarter 21-20 but outscored Hoisington 13-0 in the final eight minutes to pick up the 33-21 victory to get the win there and get to 10-2 on the year. So both these teams 0-1 in conference play entering tonight. Something's going to give there uh, you would think here. So or It'll be almost a guarantee there I guess you should, could say uh, but nonetheless uh, should be a, a good matchup here tonight between matchup here tonight between Scott City and Cimarron. The Blue Jays have won the last five in the series. Make that the last six. They won all three games that they played in 2021. Swept the series in fall or December 21, January 22, and won the last meeting. Did the Blue Jays 52-44. Cimarron has won two straight against Scott City here in this building. Last time the Lady Beavers won. Well, it was in this building. It was in the sub-state semifinals on March the 6th when they won 50 to 31 in 2020. Uh, he had to go back, yeah, to the pre-pandemic there. Uh, a week before the state tournament, that sub-state semifinal, Lady Beavers won that and ended up beating Goodland uh, by nine in overtime in the sub-state championship game uh, to get the state. So maybe uh, fortunes may turn tonight for Scott City favorable. Uh, Cimarron does lead the all-time series 16 to nine. Uh, that goes starting back in 84 when they were both in the Scott City Invitational tournaments. And uh, once again, Scott City's road does not get any easier Tuesday night. They'll have Hayes High come to town. A pretty good 5A school. And that's a good uh, uh, team uh, from Hayes. Uh, they have been ranked at times this year. I have not seen the latest 5A girls ranking, so I can tell you. But don't forget, Tuesday night for Scott City, it is winter homecoming. Uh, so plan accordingly if you want to go homecoming. It was originally scheduled for next Friday, but it is going to be on Tuesday night as uh, that will be the time there for the winter homecoming. They had to move it up because of some conflicts next Friday involving some of the homecoming uh, contestants and attendees there of that or the uh, uh, royalty, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, but yes, that's that's the situation there. But three games in a row actually for Scott City after next week, uh, tomorrow or Tuesday night, and uh, uh, Tuesday night against Hayes at home. Friday next week against Ulysses, and then the following Tuesday, it'll be a big matchup uh, for Scott City as they'll take on the Lake and Bronx. Could have some sub-state implications on that. Let's step aside for this timeout. And we'll get back to with more of your coverage here. We'll have your starting lineups, keys of the game, and the opening tip-off between Scott City and the Cimarron Blue Jays. We'll step aside for this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. At Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner clean for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. S&T is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. S&T is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. With over 10 years of experience, Jamie at JW Enterprise can repair your windshield quickly and conveniently. Even if you don't have time to make it to the shop, Jamie can fix your windshield from your home or he can come get your vehicle for you. JW Enterprise is insured and Safe Flight certified. He might be operating under a different name, but Jamie still provides the same quality of service. Let Jamie at JW Enterprise fix that chip in your windshield now. Find JW Enterprise on Facebook or give him a call at 785 Two six zero seven 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 three. Starting lineups here tonight are presented by Security State Bank in Scott City and Leota Free Bill Pay and Online Banking. Safe, secure, and easy to use member FDIC. For the Cimarron, or Scott City Beavers, are coached by Amy Felker in her third season and uh, assisted by Aaron Myers. The starting tonight for Scott City, you have Bren, or, uh, let's get this uh, right here, Brenly Stevens being the start once again tonight. She is the 5'6 junior, averaging one point, nearly two rebounds a game. Kendall Gentry, a 5'3 sophomore, averages four and a half points, 3.2 boards. A contest. Brooke Strine, the 6'1 senior, at 14.6 points, nearly nine rebounds a game. Also, Erica Felker, the 5'6 junior, 15.2 points, 4.8 boards per contest. And uh, once again, rounding out the five is going to be Cheyenne Kramer, the 5'9 junior. The 5'9 junior averaging three and a half points and 3.7 rebounds a game. For the Cimarron Blue Jays, are coached by Austin Stebbins in his second season, assisted by Casey Flax and former Cimarron Blue Jay herself, Taylor Jantz. Glory Bertelson, the 5'4", senior, averaging 4.5 points and 1.6 boards a game. It's Taryn Jantz, the 5'10", senior. She averages 7.5 points, 4.3 boards a game. Also in the starting lineup tonight will be Jana Wilson, the 5'8", junior, at 5.1 points and 3.9 rebounds a game. Michaela Mill 
Miller, the Creighton Blue Jays signee. She is a 6'1 senior at 18.5 points and 9.5 rebounds a game. And Kaylin Sande, a 6'1 senior, 9.8 points and 7.8 boards a game. Chloe Bertelson, Tayer and Jans, Jana Wilson, Michaela Miller, and Kaylin Sande, the starting five tonight for the Cimarron Blue Jays. Well, that's your starting lineups. Let's head to your keys to the game well, tonight once again, presented by Security State Bank, or how about State Farm Major Michael Trout. Well, keys tonight for Scott City. I think the first big key is rebounding. They have not done a good job rebounding against Cimarron the last couple of times that they played. Again, Cimarron, another key for Scott City tonight, I think. Just, you know, keep Miller in front of you, and I know that can be a tough task, but keep her in front of you. Those are your keys to the game tonight, presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. Other games tonight in the GWAC, uh, two of them account toward the league standings in the head-to-head. -head. This one in Cimarron, also Holcomb. They're making their trip to Colby to take on the Eagles. Ulysses and Hugot in battle for the first time this year. And also Goodland will play out of conference. They will be at Russell to take on the Broncos. Scott City tonight in their road navy blue uniforms, lighter blue numbers, letters, and white trim. Cimarron in their home white tops. Also the Columbia blue numbers and letters in that dark blue trim. Michaela Miller and Brooks trying to tip center, and it's going to be swiped away uh, by Cimarron as we're underway. Kramer had it, and then Miller goes over and knocks it to her teammate. Now Miller runs the point. We could see Scott City really rotate between a 3-2 and a 2-3 zone defense here tonight. Miller with the left side to bounce pass to Jana Wilson. Wilson back up top left to Taryn Jans. First possession of the game. Here's Wilson for a two. Her foot on the line, no. And the backside rebound will trickle out of bounds and it'll belong to Scott City. Wilson had three points in the first meeting between the two teams back on the 13th of December. As I mentioned, it was really the... Uh, Taryn Jansen and Caitlin Sande who had a, a big bulk of their points. That was 31 of their 52 points. Here's a nice cut by Felker. She'll back away and around Miller. Go to her left and draws the... Oh, yep, the Duke. She does draw the contact. Says official Mark Brack. First team foul of the game on Cimron. And Miller picks up her first foul with 7.23 here in the opening eight minutes of play. Nope, they're going to get Caitlin Sande. I beg your pardon. And two free throws coming up for Felker. 84% on the year and she has the first point of the game for Scott City. 7.23 go first quarter. Last couple of times Scott City has played in this building against Cimarron. They've had a good first three quarters and then Cimarron really came to life in the fourth quarter. That second free throw for Ed Felker rims in and out and here's Michaela Miller with it. She grabbed the board. 1-0 Scott City. First minute of this game. Counts toward the GWAC standings. Both teams looking to get their first league win of the year. Miller with it up top. Guarded by Brinley Stevens. He'll drive left side. Is cut off. Nice tough move. Big shot too strong. Got her own rebound underneath and will go up in his score foul as she hits the deck hard. Does Miller. And it's 2-1 Cimarron with 7.02 to go first quarter. Looks like she's okay. So already an early lead change. I'm going to get that on Brindley Stevens, her first. Miller, 73% at the line this year. The team Cimarron at 60%. Two one-year score, make it 3-1 for the Blue Jays. As Cimarron will open up in a 1-3-1 three-quarters court, looking to trap or force a turnover. Hey, Scott City gets in the front court to Brooks Stryne, now to Brindley Stevens toward the left corner. Holds it. Now we'll find Erica Felker at pie left. She'll drive in, pull up mid-range left. It's off to the right. Rebound Chloe Bertelson for Cimarron. And now into the hands of Taryn Jans. Scott City 0 of 1 from the field to start this game. Trailing 3 to 1. 640 to work first quarter. Cimarron is 1 of 3. And it goes to Jantz. She is double teamed, but right side to Sande as they have a four outlook right now to the Blue Jays. Miller left side. She'll drive the left baseline. Goes underneath the basket. Pivots to her right and banks it home. She has all five of Cimarron's points. It was 6.23 to go first quarter. Blue Jays up here early on, 5-1. Gentry, high pass, but Strine is able to reel it in back to Gentry out high. Keeps the pivot foot down, looks for Brindley Stevens' right side. Dumps it into Strine, backs away, goes right over Sade, hits the top of the backboard, and the rebound goes to Michaela Miller. Already has three rebounds and five points for Cimarron. They lead 5-1, to one, two minutes in, Bertelson, Scott sitting in the zone. In the side to Jarens, now a high Bertelson. Goes to her right with the dribbles, cut off, and now to uh, work it around to... Michaela Miller pulls up for this 15-footer. Off the back arm by the rebound, backside to Sande. Double teamed immediately, goes up over Kramer, too strong, and Brooks Strine with the rebound for Scott City. Already four rebounds for Cimarron and just one for Scott City here with five and a half to go first quarter. Up high left to Kendall Gentry. 
Bounce pass to Cheyenne Kramer. Holds it back left to Gentry. Simmer on the man-to-man -man into Stryan. Catches it. Goes up over Sunday. No. Had a tough angle at it. And the rebound already to Michaela Miller. Has four boards already in this quarter. Miller goes right side to Bertelson. Almost double dribble. She drives in and a whistle. They're going to get a push on Kendall Gentry on Bertelson. That'll be a first. Scott City with two team fouls. And in this first quarter of 5.15 to go is McKenzie Metzger. And... Avery Lewis check in. Lewis coming off a career high 14 on Tuesday night against Hugoton. Cheyenne Kramer and I believe uh, Stevens take a seat and they do. Uh, here's Wilson wide open for three. It's off to the left and missed everything. But Bertelson underneath to get the rebound. She stuffed that time. And the rebound goes to Scott City's Brick Strain. And now to Felker, who has in the front court. Five minutes to go first quarter. Scott City down five to one. Oh, for three from the floor, the Lady Beavers here in the first quarter. Felker drives in, takes a strong rack shot, blocked out by Michaela Miller. A lot of contact, and it'll still stay. Scott City's ball here with 4.52 to go in the opening period. 5-1 Cimarron with the lead. All five points for Cimarron belong to Michaela Miller. Felker with just the free throw going 1-2 to there. Felker to inbound it in. Trying to find a cutter, will throw it up top to McKenzie Metzger. Metzger with the dribble out high, goes to right, she'll drive in, now to Felker, guarded by Michaela Miller, top to Strine. She'll take the jumper outside the foul line and knock it down, the southpaw gets Scott City's first field goal, 5-3 with 4.38 to go first quarter, and Scott City needed that basket desperately here. They're back to within two. Strine now 1-3 from the floor. Here's Miller with it, guarded by Felker. Now Avery Lewis will go on her and pass is thrown away. It's Cimarron with the first turnover of the game. Out left to Erica Felker here with 4.20 to go in the opening quarter. 5-3, Scott City trails with the ball. Felker trying to get a screen. They try to get it to Strine and intercepted this time by Michaela Miller. She'll go with the left hand on the left side. She has all seven of Cimarron's points with 4.08 to go first quarter. 7-3 is your score, so both teams trade turnovers that time. Cimarron scoring points on off the turnover. And now Scott City having a hard time getting it across. They do to avoid the 10 count. Brooks trying. They'll dump it fast. Deflected and all out of bounds was that time Taryn Jantz. So Scott City avoided another turnover. It'll still stay with the Lady Beavers here with 3.54 to go in the opening eight minutes of play. Felker to trigger it in. Does so to Lewis. Back in the left corner to Felker. She'll launch a three. Oh, that went halfway in and out, and Kaitlyn Sande with a backside board for Cimarron. Boy, that went halfway in and just rimmed out. 3.40 to work first quarter. Scott City struggling, shooting early on. Cimarron only last 7-2. They lead it 7-3. Bertelson left corner out high left to Michaela Miller. Back to Bertelson behind her, and miscommunication there, and Cimarron with her second turnover. 7-3, to three Cimarron here with 3.29 to go first quarter. Scott City to bring it across here from the backcourt. It'll be McKenzie Minsker that 1-2-2 two, two. now. Ball deflected in the length there giving Scott City fits. It's going to be what? They're going to give hold on here just a second. That should not be a timeout. Uh, or they're saying that they gave Michaela Miller possession of the ball and Coach Austin Stebbins, that was a good move by him. They called timeout. Michaela Miller did not have full possession of that ball. And they're going to give him the 30-second timeout. Oh, nope, they aren't. That was a good piece of officiating. I was going to say that was not full control of the ball. But you got to give uh, them credit, Cimarron credit, for maybe trying to sneak one there to keep the possession. They got together, no timeout, and a break for the Beavers. Here with 3.21 to go first quarter. It's 7-3. But you can tell Scott City maybe having to adjust early on for the length of Michaela Miller at high as she has poked the ball away a couple times already, almost had that second steal. Metzger in the front court, pass deflected out by Jana Wilson. It'll still stay with the Lady Beavers with 3.13 to go first quarter. Cimarron's good enough on defense where they will force you to have to go to the ball here. Felker in the corner threw some contact up top to Kendall Gentry. Oh, she kept the pivot foot down. Now it's trying to go left on Sunday. Bank shot off to left, wide left, and the rebound goes to Janet Wilson. She'll push it across with three minutes to go first quarter. Scott City down now. Here's a steal off a deflection. Here's Erica Felker going left side. Pump picks, leans in. No foul call. Gentry's follow-up block from behind, and the rebound goes to Cimarron. Boy, they're, and then they call that. 
I'll be honest, it's been a little inconsistent on some of the calls here in the first quarter as that one hurts Erica Felker, her first, team's third. But Scott City has forced three turnovers, have not scored off any of those turnovers here in the first quarter and trails seven to three here with 2.42 to go first quarter. Up top to Bertelson, goes left to Wilson. To Michaela Miller. Miller with it out high, the dribble up top now to Jana Wilson, the lob it in the foul line to Sande. Sande double teamed, and now here's Michaela Miller with it. Scott City playing his own defense. 2.20 to go first quarter, Scott City down 7-3. Cimarron taking their time on this possession, trying to break down the Beaver defense. Now Bertelson hangs, shoots, and too strong. Rebound, Strine will save it behind her, but right in the hands of Sande. It's now loose, and Sande, that... And they're going to call a timeout there, even though, once again, really nobody had full possession of the ball. Same official called the timeout. This time it's going to be granted here. With 2.05 to go first quarter, still nobody had possession of the ball. Basketball here brought to you tonight by our Booster Club corporate sponsors, including... American Implement, b &H Paving, Barley Grain, Beavertown, FFL, Beef Belt, Burning Farms. Also, Brickover Cattle Company, Shells Flyers, Amore, Decal Bear, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hugh and Berta Benz, Fairley Companies, and First National Bank. I still don't think that was possession of the ball, to be honest with you, on that timeout for Cimarron. The official, same official granted it the first time, granted it again. Sonday was kind of rolling on the floor there. If anything, that could have been a travel, but they let it play on. Scott City will have to adjust. Two minutes to go first quarter. They'll just have to go get the basketball. 7-3 your score here. Left side, it goes over to Wilson. Up top now to Taryn Jantz. Now left side, Bertelson with it. And uh, hi, Erica Felker with the guard uh, time of Wilson now to Jantz. Jans will put it on the floor. She'll drive left side. She's cut off and now goes to Michaela Miller. Miller hangs, dips, she's a backside to Sande, off the glass and good. Sande with the first two, 9-3 with 1.32 to go first quarter. And that was a good ball movement by Cimarron. Scott City almost walks with in the backcourt. Now to Avery Lewis in the frontcourt. 9-3, Cimarron lead and a whistle and a foul. That'll be on Jana Wilson, her second. Cimarron's second team, or first, excuse me, on Wilson. Cimarron's second team foul, 122 to go first quarter. First sub off the bench for the Lady Blue Jays is going to be Shannon Salyer, the 5'7'' senior. As Salyer checks in, she'll guard Metzger. Man-to-man -man defense inbound into Kendall Gentry, trying to direct traffic, guarded by Bertelson. Now to Strine, guarded by Sunday. She'll go to her left, now to Felker. She'll try it three. That is off to the left, and the rebound to Michaela Miller. Already five rebounds and seven points for her. Final minute of this first quarter. Scott said he's really struggling from the floor. The two is blocked by Strine and Avery Lewis with the rebound, and they're going to get a whistle. And are they going to get a travel on that? Okay. Before the rebound, I think they're going to get Cimarron out of bounds here with 102 to go first quarter. 9-3 your score. Here's Metzger will take it into the front court. So it's almost been a tough first quarter for the officials as well. Injury feed into Strine. Good position. Goes to her left. Bank shot. Good over Sunday. Strine with four of Scott City's five points with 45 seconds to work for his period. And it's not that the officials have done a bad job. They've done fine. They've just kind of struggled here in the first quarter. Maybe they haven't officiated in a week. Sometimes that'll do that to you. Bertelson with it. He'll, she'll drive right side, guarded by Gentry tightly. Scott City in a man-to-man. -man. Left side, Salyer drives on Metzger, cut off. They're cutting Miller. She'll lay it up and score it. She has nine already in this first quarter. Four of five from the floor. 11 of five with 18 seconds to go first quarter. And Scott City's not been able to put together a run here in this opening eight minutes of play. Right side to Strine. She'll drive in on Sonday. Puts it up wide to the right. And the rebound to Michaela Miller. Another rebound for her. Three seconds, two seconds. Miller launches a 35-footer and buries it. Her 14th three of the year in Cimarron, who was scoreless on Monday night, has put up 14 first quarter points and leads the Lady Beavers by nine after one. Back in a minute for the second quarter of play. This is Beaver basketball.
It is a 14-5 Cimarron lead and a deserved ball to begin the second quarter. As the Blue Jays shot 6 of 6, 13 from the floor for 46%. Scott City was just 2 of 12 in that first quarter. Cimarron only glass in the opening eight minutes, 12 to 3. They had three second chance opportunities into Sande, wraparound pass, and now a tough shot for Jansen No, and the rebound to Brooks Dry, and she grabs her third board of the half. So hopefully that's a start for Scott City, but Miller drained a deep three to end the first quarter into Lewis on the other end in transition, beating Cimarron down the floor for Lewis's first basket. 14 7, 7 34 to go, first half. As Scott City needed that one. Method up top is Bertelson. She'll fire up a three and hit bury it. Cimarron's hit their last two threes. Bertelson her 15th, and it's 17-7 with 7.16 to go first half. And now Scott City's going to throw it away. They've done good with the turnovers in the first half. That's just their second, but Cimarron has just been able to get the ball to the hole a lot better. They've been able to get some runs. Scott City has not been able to string together a series of runs in the first half. 17-7, Cimarron lead, opening minute of this second quarter. Lady Beavers on Tuesday night shot 20 of 38, and now Wilson from three, and rebound Sunday over Lewis with the putback. Sunday with four points and four boards is now 19-7 with 6.55 to go first half. Looks, looks like a different Cimarron team than what maybe they've seen as of late. Left side, Avery Lewis will fire from 16. That's off to the right, the rebound, Strine. They're going to get her for a foul over the back on that one. Strine's first, and that'll be Scott City's fourth foul of the half. Timeout on the floor. It's going to be taken by Scott City. It's a 30 second timeout. So we'll keep a ride here with 6.43 to go, second quarter. Cimarron 19, Scott City 7. And basketball tonight presented here by First National Bank. So Farm Bureau Financial Services, Neil Baker, Fro Heating and Cooling, Fro Ag Service, Fro Electric, Great Western Tire, Harris Chiropractic, and Acupuncture. And also. High Choice Feeders, Ham Amy Farms, HRC Feed Yards, Janar Current Trek, Janar Trekking, and JF Beaver Advertising. So a rough start here to the second quarter for Scott City after they got the opening points from Avery Lewis. They've had one turnover. Cimarron scored the last five of the ball game and they lead it 19 to seven with 6.43 to go first half. Now Cimarron shot, hit two of their first three in the second quarter. They're now eight of 16 for the game. Scott City, one of their first two. And they're just three of 14 in the first half. Out of the 30-second timeout taken by Coach Amy Felker, 19-7 Blue Jay lead. Lady Beavers in a 2-3 zone. Good defense by Metzger. Forces a turnover, the fourth on Simmer on this half. So Scott City needing to get the chisel out and hammer at this deficit. Here was 6.20 to go first half. Metzger with it goes right to Erica Felker. Felker so far held to one point. Cheyenne Kramer launches a deep two and buries it. 19-9, a good shot that time from Kramer and makes it 19-9 as we approach six minutes to go first half. And a much needed basket for Scott City to settle the nerves down a little bit and get it to within 10. Miller with the left side, that's Michaela. Miller gets a screen, stops, pops a three. Off the backyard, hits the backboard support. And it'll belong to Scott City as Avery Lewis to enter the game for Scott City. And she will replace McKenzie Metzger. So it's Erica Felker, Brindley Stevens, Avery Lewis, Cheyenne Kramer, and Brooke Strine. You know for Scott City, you're going to see Felker and Strine probably out there for all 32 minutes. Into Strine, she'll go to her right. Her bank shot is good as she goes around Sunday. And for the first time tonight, Scott City has a little rally going. They now trail by eight with 5.40 to go first half in 19-11. Strine with four. The three by Bertelson, no. Correction, Strine with six. And the rebound tracked down in the corner by Brindley Stevens. So Scott City can get it even closer than Lewis. Now finds Strine. Goes up, shot up. Yes! It'll bounce around and drop home. It's a 6-0 Scott City run. And Lady Beavers have cut the deficit in half with 5.20 to go first half at 19.13. A lot of contact there. They let it play through, and that's fine. Miller with it. Scott City goes back to man-to-man. -to -man. Gets a screen to Miller. Steps inside the top of the key. She'll drive left lane line. Jump stop out high right to Chloe Bertelson, guarded by Brindley Stevens. She'll use up her dribble. Goes left to Michaela Miller around Avery Lewis. She'll take it all the way. Hang, shoots, and no good. Rebound Sunday. Ripped away by Felker by, for Scott City. They're really letting him play, and the pass is thrown away. Trying to get it to Avery Lewis and get a little greedy. Turnover number three, a two-on-one number. Sande layup good. Sande makes it 21-13 with 4.42 to go first half. 
The difference right now is Cimarron scoring points off of Sky City turnovers. Sky City has not been able to do that off of Cimarron turnovers this first half, and Felker travels before she passes it off. Back-to-back -back Scott City turnovers, their fourth of the half is in for Cimarron. Will be Janae Fugit, I believe. Yep, that's right, the 5'8 sophomore, and she will replace Caitlin Sande. So Cimarron gets smaller down in the paint, and when Scott City is on offense next time around, they need to take advantage of that. 4.28 to go first half. Cimarron scored the last four points, or correction, last basket of the game. They trail 21, or they lead Scott City, rather, 21-13. That's going to be a travel uh, by Cimarron. That's their fifth turnover of the half. Back over goes to the Beaver Blue. Cimarron will back off. They'll pick up Scott City right at half court. Stevens to Felker. So we're nearing the midway point of this first half. Felker to bring it across the 10-second line. Now between the rings goes right with the pass to Avery Lewis. Lewis back up top to Cheyenne Kramer. Kramer holds it now right side to Felker. Gets a screen, drives to the foul line. Needs help, finds Lewis right corner. Four minutes to go first half. Lewis will get a screen. She'll drive in, pivot. Trying to get it into stride. Catches it up and under move. Goes right, bank shot wide to the left. Good defense by Michaela Miller. Rebound into the hands of Taryn Jans for Cimarron. Scott City did everything right, but finished there. But good effort. Miller will take it all the way herself. She'll lay it up and score it. She has 14 and a half. It's 23-13. With 3.38 to go first half, as Cimarron has scored the last five po or four points in the ball game. They've hit two threes in this first half. Sky City just 0 for 2 on threes. As Felker goes left, now left corner to Strine. Gets the screen, goes right, and now to Brindley Stevens into Lewis, and she has pushed. And that'll be team foul number three on the Blue Jays this half with 3.20 to go second quarter. It'll be charged to Janae Fugit. As Megan Trout enters for the first time, she will replace Cheyenne Kramer. Trout, the 5'10 sophomore, had four in the first meeting. Scott City's been whistled for four fouls this half. Knock on wood, neither side has been in foul trouble. Trying to get it into Felk or to a Trout, and Scott City throws it away. Turnover number five. That's her third turnover in the last four trips down. 3-10 to go, second quarter. 10-point Cimarron lead the ball. Now pass almost stolen away, and we're going to get a tie-up. It'll end up being a turnover as that time Stevens tied up with Janae Fugit. Scott City will get the ball back down 10, just outside of three minutes to go, second quarter of play. Felker to bring it across, goes into Lewis, backs her way and goes to her left and gets stripped going up. It'll still stay with the Blue, or the Beavers rather, with 2.56 to go first half. 23-13, Cimarron leads. Scott City briefly led one to nothing, and since then it's been all Cimarron ahead. They've led by as many as 12. Scott City had it down to six. It's right now at 10. Into Strine, guarded by Miller, goes to her left to Strine, off to the left on the shot, and the rebound into the hands of Janae Fugit. Here's Cimarron pushing in transition. The layup is good. Taryn Jantz, her first basket, 25-13, back to a 12-point game as the teams have traded six points for six points, 2.40 to go first half. So Scott said he had it down to six, but a couple of turnovers, a couple of missed shots have hampered him. Felker, only one point in this first half up top to Avery Lewis. That's been a big story for Scott City. She's not attempted a shot this quarter, has Felker. Now gets it to Stevens driving underneath. Double team backside to Strine, who puts it up and is fouled. She'll get two free throws. That was good ball movement that time by Scott City. Team foul number four in the Blue Jays with 2.17 to go first half. I think they get Fugit with her second. Correction, they'll get Taryn Jantz. Taryn Jantz, that's her first person. Strine's first trip to the line tonight where she's 71% on the year. Scott City just one of two at the line. Cimarron one of one. And free throw, nothing but net. Strine with nine in the half. 25-14, 2.17 to go before intermission. Kaylin Sande back in for the Blue Jays, replacing Jana Wilson. As Scott City brings in McKenzie Metzger and Kendall Gentry, and out will be Brindley Stevens and Erica Felker. Second charity toss for Strine. That one rimming around and out and rebound into the hands of Janae Fugiter, second board. Scott City has seen Cimarron really own the glass once again. A 15 to 5 in this first half. 2.08 to go, second quarter. Scott City down by 11, 25 14. Michaela Miller now guarded by Megan Trout out of high, but now guarded by Metzger. Driving in, here's Fugue. Goes right side to Bertelson. She'll launch another three. That one off the back iron. The rebound, Miller got around. Trout will put it up and score it. 
She has 16 and seven rebounds already, and it's 27 to 14 with 146 to go first half. Rebounding is an issue once again against Simron for Scott City. Mesker's pivoting and round up tie. She uses up her dribble, and now to Gentry. Back it goes to Metzger back to Gentry out high. Minute 30 to go, second quarter, right side. And Metzger will try a three. She'll be too strong. A rebound tipped around and in the hands of Burleson for Cimarron. Here they come on the run. Up by 13, 80 seconds to go, second quarter. Miller right corner. She'll fire a three, and she'll be strong on that. She gives it right to Avery Lewis, who grabs her first board of the night. Scott City down 13 with a minute 13 to go, first half. Metzger with the dribble up top to Kendall Gentry. Into Brooks Strine at the foul line, guarded by Sande behind the trap, but she does haul it in. Now Metzger up top, she'll turn down the three, right side. Lewis, she'll try three, and that's blocked, and the rebound to Michaela Miller with 59 seconds to go first half. Simran with the ball up 13, and here's a right side three, Jantz good. 30 to 14 with 51 seconds to go first half. Simran up 16, Scott City Burns a full timeout. Well, let's take a one minute break. This is Beaver basketball. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. The world needs more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We our Volgamore Family Farms. Full housing lender. So far, it's a 16-9 run for Cimarron in the second quarter. They're on an 11-1 run over the last four minutes, and they have a 30-14 lead here on Scott City. Into Strine, goes to her right, puts up the shot. No foul called. They let it play through, and the rebound fought for in Michaela Miller. Then they're going to call a foul on Trout for undercutting um, Miller as Shrine had good position underneath. That'll be team foul number five on Scott City. Miller already with nine rebounds in the first half to go along with their 16 points. Scott City down 30 to 14 with 35 seconds. They have not had a field goal in five minutes. They had it to within 19 13 with 522 to go first half. It's an 11 to 1 run for the Blue Jays since then. And they may go for the final shot of the half. They have the possession arrow in their favor. 20 seconds to go first half in the half court circle with it is Michaela Miller. And now right side out high to Shannon Sawyer's back in. Back up top to Miller, 13 seconds right side to Sawyer. Sawyer goes around the top. Now goes to Fugit to Miller with six seconds of five. Guarded by Felker at four. Launches a big three short. Rebound tipped and then it's going to be Jantz. That three will not count it. It went wide left anyway. And that's the halftime. It's been a rough first half for Scott City as they trail 30 to 14 to the Blue Jays. A simmer on here at the break. We'll come back in three minutes for your halftime show. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden, OD, today.
us, it's about so much more than just providing the technology. It's about enriching the communities we live in. Because your community is our community. Where you live, where you work, where you play, we do too. Whatever you do, and wherever you are, our service supports you. Next Tech Wireless, we are Kansas. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with the knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, Go Beaver! 43 of the half on an 11 to 1 run and Scott City trails at the break 30 to 14 to a hot shooting Cimarron team. First half numbers for Scott City look like this. 9 for Brooks Strine, 4 each for Aver Lewis and Cheyenne Kramer and Erica Felker just one point here tonight for Scott City. It really didn't come down to turnovers even though they were at critical times. Scott City had 5 turnovers. Four of those in the second quarter, five fouls, four steals. They had just six rebounds in the first half. That's where it came down to. Cimarron out rebounded Scott City 19 to 6 unofficially in the first half. Cimarron was led by Michaela Miller. She had 16 points and nine rebounds in the first half. Five for Taryn Jantz. She had those in succession in the second quarter. Kaylin Sande added four. Chloe Bertelson had a three point basket. And that's your 30 points there for Cimarron in their first half. Uh, actually, Miller ended up with, uh, I believe that was 18 points actually in the first half. As Scott City led 30 to 14, or trails rather, 30 to 14 here at the break. And uh, Cimarron had four fouls, six turnovers, three steals. They had 14 defensive rebounds, five offensive boards, 19 first half rebounds. So. May, Michaela Miller with 18 points, nine rebounds already in that first half. Semron with a big lead of 30 to 14. We'll step aside for another three minute break and come back with some more first half stats. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, economy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. 
Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Co-op is a proud, proud supporter of our local communities. Chambliss Roofing has you covered since 1993. They are prepared for any job like maintenance and repair, an upgrade, or a new install. They provide the best customer service for residential and commercial roofing. Looking to upgrade to a metal roof? They can do that as well. If you have any existing damage or are looking for a roof that will last for years to come, don't wait to get a free consultation. Visit their website, ChamblessRoofing.com, by scanning the QR code on screen now. Equal housing lender. Back here inside the Cimarron High School Gymnasium as it's halftime once again, 30 to 14 for the Blue Jays of Cimarron leading the Lady Beavers of Scott City. First half stats, looking the extended look at them here. Uh, Scott City was 6 of 22 from the floor in the first half, unofficially just 27%. They were 0 of 4 on threes, just 6 of 18 on two-point baskets. And from the free throw line, just 2 of 4 in the first half. Really, neither side went to the foul line much. There were not only a combined nine fouls in the first half. A 5 on Scott City, 4 on Cimarron. The Blue Jays, they were 52% from the field in the first half, 13 of 25, 3 of 9 from behind the three-point arc. In two-point range, 10 of 16, and they were a perfect 1 of 1 at the foul line. So Lady Beavers, Lady uh, Blue Jays, no foul troubles for either side. Every home to take on Hayes High on Tuesday night. First of three consecutive home games, Hayes, Ulysses, Lake, and it'll be winter homecoming on Tuesday night. Cimarron will be on the road. They'll step out of Lake play and take on Sublette. They'll have High Plains League uh, foes next week, Sublette and Lakin, before they travel to Huguenot. And they have uh, only one more home game, or make that two more home games, three of their make that five of the next six games after tonight are going to be on the road. Uh, just uh, took a look at some scores in the, across the league at half. Two really lopsided scores. One close one in the third quarter. Colby and Holcomb were tied at 29 in the third quarter. 37-2 for Hugoton over Ulysses at the break. That's right, 37-2. And then Goodland was at Russell. They were up 45 to five over the Lady Broncos at the break. Here it's 30 to 14. Scott City rolls out their starting five with Kendall Gentry, Cheyenne Kramer, Brindley Stevens, Brooke Strine, and Erica Felker. It's Cimarron with Jana Wilson, Michaela Miller, Chloe Bertelson, also Kaylin Sande and Taryn Jan. So four seniors and a junior starting for the Cimarron Lady Blue Jays in the second half. The lob underneath the Sande, underneath the Sande, but Strine unable to to get the steal, and it was poked out of bounds. It was more defense by Sunday there that time, and it'll stay with the Blue Jays with just 13 seconds into the second half. They'll get into Miller. She'll just drive inside the foul line and knock home the jumper for her 20th point. She has nine boards, 32-14 with 7.42 to go third quarter, and the Lady Beavers just have not had an answer whatsoever for number 32 to nine. Now Brooks drive backside, had a drive to the basket, but she lost the handle, and now works out of a double team to... Uh, Gentry and then finally trickles into Felker. Now to left of Strine, misses a wide left, but got her on rebound. Can't get the shot to drop in. Third time, no. Man, three shots underneath there for Strine, and she cannot get him either side, and it's Wilson the other way. And now Scott City forces a turnover. That'll be the seventh tonight on Cimarron. Fortunately for the Lady Beavers, they have not scored points off turnovers. Into Strine, catches it now to Felker. She'll fire three. Oh, too strong. It was on target. Michaela Miller with the board. Boy, Felker really struggling tonight. Just one point. Had a good look there. Miller the other way. No. Rebound. Cheyenne Kramer grabs her first board of the night. Scott City's done a better job scoring here, or rebounding in this second half. 6.40 to go third quarter. Cimarron with an 18-point lead in the stride. Nice up and under move in the layup. Oh, she just maybe 
have rushed it a little bit, misses it in the backside board to Miller. Boy, she did everything right but finish it there. Bertelson will fire up a three and hit it. Cimarron's 14, or fourth three of the night. They're up 35 to 14 with 6.20 to go third quarter. This is once a six point game with about 5.52 to go first half. Since then it is a 16 to one run. Felker with it, now poked away a Scott City turnover. Things going south, two on one numbers. Jans left side, Bertelson steps back to fire three and that one too strong. Felker wrestles away the rebound and commit, draws a foul on Taryn Jans, her second and the team's first of the half. That was Felker's first rebound of the night. And is Avery Lewis to replace Kendall Gentry. Lewis just two points. Only four Lady Beavers have scored tonight. Uh, same can be said for Simran, but they've had bigger outputs from everybody that has scored. Strine with it. She has nine of Scott City's 14 points here, a 5.48 to go third quarter. And now driving in, here's Felker. She'll take it all the way to the rack, and she'll lay it up. No, Strine couldn't quite get the rebound, and then two Lady Beavers fought for it, and that allows Simran to fight for it. We're going to whistle and a push. On Taryn Jans, who's frustrated, she almost had to be careful. She could have easily been teed up there. Jans with her third foul, second on the Blue Jays this half with 5.38 to go. Scott City down 35-14. They have had so many opportunities to score here. Now Strine, can she get one to go? She won't, but she'll go to the line for two. That foul on Kaylin Sande, her second and the team's third. That's really the difference. Scott City in the first half, maybe a little too much, trying to go around Sunday and Miller instead of trying to go up and over or through them to try to con draw the contact. Strine with two free throws, one of two at the line, and make it one of three. Right now, you have a feeling it's just a mental block for Scott City. Scott City now two of five at the line, trailing by 21 with five and a half to go third quarter. Scott City has not scored a field goal in eight minutes. And that's their second point in the last five minutes. Strine with double figures with 10, 35-15. Five and a half to go third quarter. Lady Beavers now three of six to the line. They have not hit a three tonight. They hit five or four in the first meeting. Cimarron had four threes as well, but they've matched that total already. Bertelson trying to make it five. That one rims off. And the rebound, Strine collects it, stays in bounds on the tippy toes. And now to Avery Lewis through her hands and Scott City with their seventh turnover. Now Michaela Miller with it. She'll go up and she draws the contact, but no foul there, wow. And the rebound goes to Brooke Strine. She has her seventh board of the night. Now gets it to Cheyenne Kramer with under five to go third quarter to Erica Felker. 20 point Cimarron lead, Scott City ball at 35-15. Five, one run so far for the Blue Jays this third quarter. Up top to Avery Lewis. Puts it on the floor. She'll drive left side. She'll take it all the way and draw the contact, and she'll get two free throws, and that might be on Taryn Jans. If that's the case, that would be her fourth foul, and it is. She's picked up three fouls in this fourth quarter with 4.41 to go third quarter. We've seen Scott City with a little surge of driving at him here in this second half. I wonder if that was the message from Coach Amy Felker at halftime. Two free throws for Avery Lewis. Free throw is good. You see the officials with their arms out. As Lewis hits the free throw to make it 35-16, Mackenzie Metzger check in with 4.41 to go third quarter, and Shannon Sawyer in. You saw the arms out for both two of the officials. That would have been a lane violation had Lewis missed that free throw. She missed the wrong one. That's her second, or on the second, it was no good, and Michaela Miller with the rebound. Sawyer will try a right corner three, and she'll bury it, her seventh three of the year. And Cimarron with the 38-16 lead with 4.26 to go first half. Cimarron's fifth triple of the night as the Blue Jays ply 1-3-1, one, three, one, three quarters court press, but Scott City breaks it. Right side to Brindley Stevens, into Lewis, out high to Felker. Can she finally get a field goal to go down? She finally will. Her fourth point and her 29th three of the year, 38-19. Timeout on the floor taken by Scott City. A 4-10 to go third quarter. Lady Beavers are down to two. We'll keep it right here, 38-19. And Scott City's first field goal in over nine and a half minutes. And their first three of the basketball night here. We want to thank Janard Car and Truck Center for providing transportation here to Cimarron. You can view their new inventory, which are, looks like they're getting a little bit more on their lot. That's at Janard Car and Truck Center, West 5th Street, Scott City, also online, jrcarandtruck.com. 
course, wrestlers were in action today at the Rocky. And they had three in the semifinals. Colin McDaniel advanced to Saturday's final, but still quite a few wrestlers left. Houston Frank and at 165 pounds and Tanner getting at 215 pounds. They both made the semifinals but lost. The Beavers in 10th place in a tie there after day one, so good showing there. Out of the 32nd Scott City timeout, Sawyer with it, Michaela Miller left crying, did not foul, and Felker with the board. Scott City's done a better job in the glass in the second half. Now she'll drive in, will Strine, she'll be fouled from behind, and that'll be two free throws coming up here with 345, which is crazy enough. Scott City has not committed to foul in this third quarter, and Cimarron has committed five, and two of their three top scorers now in foul trouble here, with Chance on the bench with four, Sawyer, or correction, Sande with three. Two free throws for Strine, and she knocks that one down. 38-20, 3.45 to go third quarter. Scott City with their third trip to the line in this second half. They are three of five, and make it four of six. That puts them north of 50%. 38-21, Scott City on a seven to three run over the last two minutes. But they have a big hole to climb out of. They're down 17 with 3.35 to go third quarter in a zone defense. Jana Wilson with it, goes right to Sande. Sande holds it, skips it to Bertelson for her third three of the night. Off to the right, but the rebound to Michaela Miller. She'll drive in the right side to Sande from 17. Too strong. Rebound backside to Bertelson off a deflection. And now Cimarron will reset here. They have two offensive boards in this possession. Ball deflected out. 3.13 to go third quarter. 38-21, Cimarron with the lead and the basketball. Bertelson now, Salyer left corner, and she travels with it in the left corner, and that'll be Cimarron's eighth turnover of the night. Yeah, I keep hearing the whistles here, uh, but the JV or C team boys game going on over to the north of this court, kind of above and to the north of the main gym here in Cimarron, the gym floor. And that's where they play their JV and C team games here in Cimarron. So you hear those whistles and Scott City will lose it out of bounds. Their eighth turnover of the night as Kendall Gentry shakes back in. You hear the whistles and I kind of wonder if maybe the uh, if the players somehow flinch a little bit down below if they hear the fouls on the uh, JV court or vice versa. But so far we haven't seen vice versa. 245 here in the third. 38-21 Scott City down 17. The Blue Jays with the ball. Sawyer with the left side. She'll work her way up top. Now finds a Cutting Miller to the paint. Her turnaround jumper bounces in for a 22nd point. 40 to 21. 240 to go, or 230 to go third quarter. As Simron extends the lead back up to 19. And into Avery Lewis. Pulls up. Now almost gets tied up and almost throws away. Miller almost fouls out high. And now here's Felker right side. Mackenzie Metzger. She'll launch a three. Oh, too strong. It was on target. And Kaylin Sande, her fourth board of the night. Make that her fifth board of the night for Simron. Metzger had a good look there from three. She's only hit one this year, but. Here's another three for Cimarron and another one down for Bertelson. She has three threes and nine points, 43-21. And both teams will trade five points there for five points. Full timeout, Cimarron. We'll come back in one minute. This is Beaver Basketball. J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet. About how we can help in your farming operation. Back here, 43-21, Simron on the lead. Megan Trout back in for Scott City. Nice up and removed by Strine, and then that's going to be a push by Sunday, and that'll be her fourth foul. She, that was a very odd to play there by Sunday. It was like she was frustrated that she let Strine go by her and then pushed her in the back. And now Sunday with four fouls with 153 to go third quarter. Six fouls on the Blue Jays this quarter. Not on Scott City, two free throws for Strine. The first of two is good. 
And she now has a Baker's dozen, 43-22, 1.53 to go third quarter. In for the first time is Morgan Eskim, a 5A junior. Stanza Strine with a big third quarter. She has 15 in the ball game, 15 to Scott City's 24, and a foul out high. That'll be on Erica Felker, her second. Just Scott City's first team foul of the half with 65 third quarter seconds remaining. 46-24 is your score for Semron. They've led by as many as 24. It's right now at 22. Final minute of this one. We're seeing Scott City be more aggressive in this third quarter than they were really, truly in the first half. And that is shown by some of the foul trouble by Cimarron this by Megan Trout for Scott City. 45 seconds to work third quarter. Metzger to try to bring it across. Gets poked away, but picks it back up. Kind of runs into Bertelson. Now lobs it out to Trout out high. Back to Metzger. 35 seconds. Nice cut. Shrine. Oh, she lost it, but picks it back up, and she has 18. 48, 626 with 30 seconds to go third period. Correction, 17 for Strine. 20 seconds to go in this third quarter up top to Michaela Miller as Cimarron is going to more than likely hold it out here for the final shot. They have outscored Scott City 16 to 12 here in this third quarter. Miller around a couple of screens out, or screen out high, steps back, fires a three over Lewis. Too strong, long rebound to Bertelson. She's had a big night. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Miller guarded tightly, and now Sawyer launches a deep three, but airballs it. The way she shot in the third quarter, wouldn't have been surprised that went in. It's a 20-point Cimarron lead as we head to the fourth, 46-26. Back in a minute, this is Lady Beaver Basketball. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. Exceptional results. It's a 20 point Cimarron lead as we head to the fourth quarter, 46 26 over Scott Setty. We're back here in Cimarron here. It's, uh, it's been all Blue Jays tonight. They've done it from mostly behind the three point arc. Here's a nice cut to the basket, but. Good recovery defense by Felker as she pokes it away there. Cimarron led by Michaela Miller's 22 points. Sky City led by Brooks Strine's 17. But Cimarron has hit six, make that seven threes in the game. That's 21 of their 46 points. That three air balled out by Fugan and out of bounds that belong to Scott City. Scott said he's been out rebounded 27 to 15 in the Clexer second board of the night. Minute plus into this fourth quarter. Sa Shannon Sawyer averaging one and a half points a game. She's hit two threes for six points. Way in, tough shot. Game as we approach five minutes to go, and all of a sudden, Scott City has erased a 20. Four-point deficit down to 14. Austin Stebbins is going to end the momentum and call a 30-second timeout with 5.05 left. Basketball presented here by Jackson Legal Group, Lebanon Lawn and Tree, uh, Lone Tree Farms and Livestock, McCarty Family Farms, Metzger Appraisals, Metzger Family Farms, Midwest Mixer, Western Bearing, Miller Veterinary Clinic, North Supply, New Life Market, Plain Jans, Pokey Feeders, and Platinum H Insurance. So Lady Beavers have cut a 20-point deficit down to 14 here. It's 48-34. Lady Beavers are on an 8-2 run in this fourth quarter with 5.05 to go. That allowed Cimarron to burn their third timeout of the game. Both teams have two full timeouts left. But Stebbins seeing the momentum shift back towards Scott City. He also had to send in Caitlin Sande and Taryn Jansu. who all, both have four fouls. They each picked up three fouls in the third quarter. Five oh five remaining in this one. 
48-34 is your score. Cimarron inbound it near half court into the hands of Michaela Miller. Up top now to Taryn Jantz. Left side to Jana Wilson. Both teams with their starting five on the floor. Actually, Scott City with four of their five starters. Right baseline to Sande. Now back up top to 49-34. 4.43 left. These have more really been tight games between the two squads over the last couple of years here in this building. With this, and then kind of blown away at the fourth quarter. But Jay, uh, Jana Wilson hits them both. This one, Cimarron had control of really in the first quarter on. 50 to 34, she hits them both. Her first points of the night. 5A junior averages five per ball game. Scott City back down 16 with four and a half to go. Strine with it, left side to Cheyenne Kramer out high. She'll drive in, work it right side to Stevens. In the right corner now to Avery Lewis. She's guarded by Taryn Jans. Now working around left side to Kramer to Erica Felker. She'll fire up a three. That'll be too strong. And the rebound into the hands of Wilson for Simmer on her correction Jans. Her third board of the night. So just one field goal so far for Felker as we're down to four minutes ago. Jans will drive in and she'll draw the foul and get bailed out with two free throws coming up for Jans. And they're going to get that on Erica Felker. That's her fourth with 4.05 to go. Third team foul, and Jans a 61% free throw shooter on the year as well, 14 of 23. And that one off the back iron, and of course it'll bounce in. 51 34 with 405 to go. Everything has been bouncing the right way tonight for Simron. As Colby held off Holcomb 46 to 44 on the girls' side. Simron a perfect 4 of 4, now 4 of 5, and Strine with the ninth rebound. She's one away from a double double. She has 21 points, nine rebounds, halfway through this fourth quarter. 51 34, your score. Mesker with it into Strine, goes to her right, up and under move. She'll split the defenders, blocked by Miller, who grabs her 14th rebound to go along with her 24 points. And then Scott City trying to steal it back on the other end, and they do. Cheyenne Kramer with it, throw it down the floor to Avery Lewis, who saves it, and then to Brooke Strine, she'll take the deep two. Good. She has 23. 51 36 with three thirties. And they've done a good job of not having too many turnovers tonight. Just their 10th turnover. Miller will take it strong to the rack, and she has point number 26. 53 36 with 320 to go. Lewis with it up top. She'll drive right side. Oh, she traveled. That'll be turnover number nine on Scott City. Coach Amy Felker will send in Erica to the lineup. I think Coach Amy Felker wants a timeout, and she'll get one granted. It's a full with 3.11 to go. 53-36, Cimarron will be back in one minute. This is Lady Beaver basketball. How would you describe your career? Rewarding. It's, it's more than just a job. Great vacation, great sick pay. Great opportunities to move forward. Good work environment, good people. Always something new, always something different. Every day you learn something new. Their commitment to education is second to none. They pay for my school. I, I love it because we're all big, one big happy family. 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 It's like a family. Grow your career with American Implement and John Deere. Basketball down by 17 as we're just outside at three minutes to go. Into Strine at great position, goes to her left, flips one high up, no, rebound Felker. Follow up, yes. Felker with eight, four in this quarter, 53 38 with 255 to go. As Cimarron with the ball in the front court with two on one numbers. Jan steps back and now up top, here's Wilson. She'll try a straightaway triple short. Strine with her 10th rebound and a double double. 2.40 to go in this one, 53-38. Scott City down 15 with all their fighting here in this fourth quarter despite being down the entire way and then an unforced error. And so say McKenzie Metzger took one too many steps and that's the 10th Scott City turnover. 2.34 left in this one, 53-38. Scott City playing some pressure in the backcourt, but and now we've got two-on-one numbers. Isolation time, Miller fakes the pass, throws it up too strong. Gentry just could not quite haul in the rebound. And it'll stay with the Lady Blue Jays with 2.28 to go. 53-38, Simmer on there. They've won six straight against the Lady Beavers into Sunday. Kind of got it around Strine up top to Michaela Miller. Kind of isolate her and 
see clear it out maybe see if she drives in she may run off some more time they have a five count on her now she'll have to pass it she does to Jana Wilson tight defense by Gentry up top who commits foul number two and team foul number three of the half with 212 remaining in this one 53-38 Cimarron they've not hit a three in this fourth quarter they've hit seven in the game Official timeout. I think they're seeing who the foul was on. It was on Gentry. They're just trying to, to uh, make that official in the scorebook. It's going to be a tough one for Scott City. They're going to have to forget about this one with a good Hayes team coming in. And then after next Friday, it's all three A schools, and there's a Avery Lewis foul, her first. Team's fourth with 2.04 to go. So Lewis joins the foul party with her first, a 204 left. This is still a pretty dangerous Scott City team at six and eight. Lob left side to Wilson, and she is <laughs> fouled. I can't complain about the fouls because now there's only five on Scott City, but to me, that really wasn't a foul when she straight up, and that'll send Wilson to Lyon, who has two points all in this fourth quarter from the foul line, and Gentry with three fouls. With 2.02 to go, free throw is good. Makes it 54-38 with 2.02 to go. Gentry is out, Stevens in, and now Shannon Salyer in to replace Chloe Bertelson. Second free throw coming up here for Wilson. She'll fire it up, and that'll be nothing but that. She's 4-4 at the line tonight, 55-38, final two minutes of this one. Scott City led by Brooke Strine with 23 points and 10 boards tonight. With it is Metzger from Lewis. Now dumps it to Strine, left block goes up. Stuffed by Miller who grabs her 15th board of the night. 145 to go in this one. 17 point lead for the Blue Jays. Scott City's had it to within 15 on several occasions here. A couple of occasions in this fourth quarter and now fouled by Lewis. And that'll send Miller to the line where she's 73% and one and one on the night. Lewis is second, seventh team foul on Scott City. And just like that, the fouls are even up in this half. Miller, who's pretty much automatic at the line. She has 26, and make it 27. 56, 38, 134 to go. Second free throw coming up here. Is good as well, 57, 34. As Simmer on hits all their free throws there. They are six of seven. Make that five of six from the line. About to seven of eight from the line in the fourth quarter and eight of nine for the game. Felker with it, she'll drive right side. Now back up top to Medsker. Minute 20 to go in this one. Trying to dump it into Strine, but can't. She is double team, needs help, finds Strine. Trying to go around on Miller. She'll be stuffed going up. And the, ooh, they're going to bail her out with a foul uh, on Cimarron. And that'll be on Michaela Miller. That'll be her first and the team's eighth. And so two free throws for Brooke Strine. 113 left in this one. First one is good. Strine putting together Knights, 24 points, 10 rebounds, 57 39, 113 to go. Kendall Gentry in, Erica Felker out. Very good Hayes team coming to town on Tuesday. Ulysses next Friday. Lake in the following Tuesday at home. That's the three-game stretch. Short is Strine on the second. A fight for the rebound. It's like a hot potato out there. And it's into Michaela Miller, the future Creighton Blue Jay. Final minute left in this one. So Miller will stay a Blue Jay from her high school to college. Stebbins will call a full timeout with 61 seconds to go. As Coach Stebbins does not want to send a timeout into next week. 57-39, final minutes. Let's take 30 seconds. This is Scott City Basketball. 
White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. Fifty-seven thirty-nine. Cimarron is going to win this one more than likely with 61 seconds to go. It would be their seventh straight win against Scott City. They have not won seven in a row against the Lady Beavers before, but they're 61 seconds away from doing that. That's been all in the last three years here. This one might be the most lopsided of all seven of those, other than maybe the one two years ago. It ended up being 52-30. to 30. But... I was here in this building, but others didn't feel like that run really didn't feel like that. Metzger, good effort. Almost, she did have the steal, and then, hey, Amy Felker gets a timeout on that one. Well, that'll leave it up to the scorer. Ironically, on all those timeouts like that for oh, ball possession or not, the same official has awarded it three times, but it's been consistent. Sky City now out of timeouts with 57.9 to go. Let's take a 30 second break. This is Beaver Basketball. Fifty-seven thirty-nine. It's an eighteen-point Blue Jay lead. Cimarron. Scott City will have it. They're out of timeouts. Fifty-seven point nine to go. So Kendall Gentry to trigger it in. Up top, it's to Erica Felker. A quick release on the three, short, and she tried to track down on rebound. It's in the hands of Taryn Jans, and then almost stolen away. And now we got a five for it, and another five, and down at the two-yard line, we get a tie-up. It'll be Scott City's ball. It felt like a good old rugby scrum or a football fumble there. <laughs> 46.1 to go. <laughs> inbound into Strine. Now to Kendall Gentry out high. Sawyer did not want to foul her. Now into Strine. She'll go to her right and she'll rattle one home. What a night she's had. A career night. She has 25, make that 26, 57-41. 32 seconds ago, Scott City applies some full court pressure. With it is Jana Wilson. She'll be the alone returning starter for this Cimarron team next year, and now Cimarron will throw it away. That'll be their 12th turnover of the night. This is a senior heavy team for the Blue Jays. Scott City just one senior, but you look at it, most of the teams in the league, other than Holcomb, Colby, and Scott City, and even the Ulysses to an extent, it's all seniors. Into Strine over Miller, rainbow shot, rimming around, and that'll drop in. Four, six, eight. She now has 28 points, 57, 43. Three seconds to go, and that'll do it here. So Scott City wins the second half by two. They lose the battle by 14, 57, 43. Cimarron wins it. They are now 11 and 2 on the year. They have won six in a row. They're now 1 and 1 in the conference. As Scott City drops to 6 and 8, they match a season a long three game losing streak. They're now 0 and 2 in conference play. We'll step aside for this three minute timeout. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Welcome back to another week of BB and Weekly News. I'm Hannah Ferro. And I'm Humana Garcia. On this week's edition of BBN Weekly News, Annie Talbert will be discussing the scarcity of substitute teachers in our schools and nationwide. Shasta Hope will be spotlighting some community heroes. Sage Steckline will be catching us up on Beaver basketball, and Delaney France will be giving us this weekend's weather. Let's take it to 
Annie Talbert to learn more about the substitute shortage in our schools. <laughs> The clang of lockers, the bustle of students and teachers in the hall. For many, this is a familiar scene, but a shortage within the education system is affecting the learning process. Substitute teachers are essential to keep schools running, but lately there's been a nationwide substitute shortage. I talked to Mr. Rumford, Scott City Schools District Superintendent, to find out how the substitute shortage is affecting Scott City Schools. This is my ninth year here, and I feel like we've had somewhat of an issue all nine years. It's been more extreme the last three. The biggest concern I have is the continuation of, of con instruction, uh, the continuation of the academic process for students. And so we want to try to keep it to maintain as best we can. Mr. Rumford explained what the current status of the need for subs is and how the district is attempting to fix the problem. Our, our status is still, we have a, a high need for substitute teachers. Um, really, we have a high need for substitute, uh, substitute positions in all over the district, so paraprofessionals, uh, maybe sometimes even office or a nurse, um, even substitute bus drivers are necessary. Okay, really, we've, we've focused on two areas. The first is increasing salary. Um, and that comes uh, with a little bit of a uh, concern uh, when, the, when the number of, of uh, substitutes necessary is, is increases as well, too. So um, we've, we've got a limited budget that we can use for substitute teaching. So if we increase the, the, the pay per day um, and we also increase the total number of days necessary, then our budget runs out uh, a lot sooner. And so that's a little bit of a, a concern, but uh, we have increased a little bit and we'll continue to uh, try to do that as best we can. The other thing uh, we've done is just really reached out and asked people uh, kind of a, 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 a pled to the uh, to the, our patrons in, in town to, to see if they would help. So we've reached out to local businesses to uh, see if there's any consideration for um, giving uh, paid time off to their employees to help us substitute and I know a few people have been able to do that or they have a have a day off and they said I'll commit my one day off to being available to substitute so that's been helpful as well. I asked substitutes how the so sub shortage is affecting them as well. I am at school more when since we are lacking in subs in the high school. I don't do the elementary school. And there's some at the elementary that won't come to the high school. So when you have an event, if you have basketball, wrestling, and cheerleaders all gone, you have coaches and you have um, parents of kids who are participating. So that's when you have the big influx of teachers gone and the ones in the elementary school, they aren't going to come over here and if the same thing happens at the elementary school, well I'm not going to go over there. So that's what leads to shortage of subs. I'm busier than what I thought I wanted to be. I retired after teaching 40 years and thought I'd work two or three days a week and I'm working four and five days a week to help the school out because they are so short on help. The substitute shortage is affecting all aspects of education. To learn more, I talked to Luisa Esparza, the middle school secretary. It really puts a bind on us here. Um, sometimes we're scavenging for subs in the morning and um, we have to have like the principal's cover, we have to pull um, teacher staff in order to cover rooms and we take away from para time to have to cover rooms um, especially on Mondays and Fridays that's when it really really affects our days because there there's hardly any subs available for those Mondays and Fridays the rest of the week uh, it seems to be okay but um, Mondays and Fridays is really where we see the hit on the shortage if anybody's really encouraged to go and apply, it's really fun and um, I'll make sure that you guys are treated well if you guys would like to come and apply and be part of the middle school, elementary school, high school, I know would appreciate it too. To all the substitute teachers, thank you for all that you do. For BBN, I'm Annie Talbert. Thank you, Annie. In Scott City, we are fortunate to have so many supporters.
Shasta Hope will be spotlighting some of our community heroes. Scott Community is so blessed to have amazing volunteers to help capture special moments in students' high school careers. These people have played an influential role in supporting Scott City Beavers for years, and they are what make our community so special. While there are many people who deserve recognition, I've interviewed Adam Kadavy, voice of the Beavers, for Mix 94.5. Kadevi gives play-by-play -play over the radio for many sporting events. He also volunteers his time at many other s school and community events. Uh, yeah, how long have I done this? Well, this is my 14th year in Scott City. I've been doing uh, uh, full-time about 19 years, and I actually helped out a little bit in college with uh, another station in uh, Goodland, uh, doing actually uh, area game of the week for football, and then some uh, Goodland Cowboy basketball and Calgary basketball, did, so it's been a little over 20 years. Uh, just, uh, I've always had excitement for it uh, when I was a kid and decided I, this is where I want to go. And, and so, you know, I did the, did the radio in college and so that really sparked it and really continued my interest and, and getting to know people and uh, really enjoying the game. Uh, the, the games, I should say, the multiple sports is really what got me going. Just the interaction of uh, going to the ball games and uh, interaction with the, the student athletes and all the kids and just and the coaches, of course. I, I enjoy working with the coaches as well. It's, it's, it's fun and, I mean, covering Scott City, man, you can't go wrong with that. Still, Jackson Rumford, showtime! He slams it home! 44-29! Timeout, Scott City! Oh, my! This is Scott City football. Well, I also, I, I work in uh, sales uh, for a company, uh, voice tracking uh, on the 94.5. I also, uh, say I help out with uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, class in the high school here. Um, just uh, a lot of uh, the, uh, I help out with the school with the uh, Reality U. Yeah, I do a yeah, MC, a PA uh, for quite a few events in town and uh, yeah, like some of the events at the fort, the fair, and also uh, at the uh, spring livestock show in town. The run uh, that they, the basketball and football and wrestling had in probably 2011 to 2015, and even 2018, 2019, and then also covering state track. Uh, Scott City's boys, uh, the only team in 3A to score over 100 points in state track meet. The fun, fun uh, community here in ta uh, Scott City, and. You know, I don't know, it, this is a great place to, to be and just the interaction, people are always great and just the camaraderie. I also spoke with Marcia Matthews, a volunteer photographer, about her experiences taking photos for many Scott City events. Matthews has been volunteering for about 20 years. What got me started was when my son was a freshman, I discovered that kids like to have their pictures taken and that's what got it started. What makes it worthwhile is when I go to a basketball game and I haven't been able to go to very many this year and Mackenzie sees me and she turns around, <laughs> they're warming up and she turns around and waves at me. She grabs Brooke and her and Brooke look at me and then the other girls see so they come running in and so I've got four girls down there waving at me during warm-ups. All the state championships were big. It was like we went so often in basketball that it was like a family reunion every year and I was the door greeter taking pictures. My life around the school calendar and then I fit in what I can fit in and I try to give people pictures sometimes, 800 and some pictures at the fall ball. This was my biggest ball ever. And then when I sorted them out, I had, I think, 194 envelopes. That's big. Thank you, Mr. Kadavy and Ms. Matthews for your time and dedication to Scott Community High School and our community. It is people like you who make Scott Community a great place to be. For BBN, I'm Shasta Hope. We did some good things. Our man picked it up. You know, we just got to be more solid in the first half and not let them get such a lead on us.
Well, you have a turnaround. You get three games at the friendly confines starting Tuesday night, but uh, with a very good A's team. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. All right. Well, uh, thanks again for the time here, Coach, in the post game, and uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Thanks, Adam. All right. Once again, Coach Jamie Felker joining us here post game. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? <laughs> uh, Scott City uh, falls here on the girls' side tonight here uh, by the final of uh, 57 to 43. We will take that uh, one minute break and when we do come back here, uh, we will have uh, comments from Coach Brian Gentry. So we'll do that one minute break for right now and come back with Coach Gentry. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. Welcome back to another week of BBN Weekly News. I'm Hannah Farrow. And I'm Jimena Garcia. On this week's edition of BBN Weekly News, Annie Talbert will be discussing the scarcity of substitute teachers in our schools and nationwide. Shasta Hope will be spotlighting some community heroes. Sage Steckline will be catching us up on Beaver basketball, and Delaney France will be giving us this weekend's weather. Sage Steckline is going to be catching us up on Beaver basketball. Beaver's basketball has reached a halfway point, and I recently spoke with members of the team to get some insight on how the season has been so far and what's to come. Last week, the teams competed in the annual Sterling Tournament. Um, the team did uh, pretty well at the Sterling, Sterling Tournament. We opened off strong, uh, beating Lions by um, quite a few points. Uh, I was very impressed with how we competed as far as a team where they were kind of double teaming me and Erica. It was really, I was really glad to see that the rest of the teammates kind of stepped up and played their own role. Both teams have seen their fair share of success. Despite some down games, they both have a 6-7 and seven record and are looking to improve. It has definitely went by really fast and we have seen lots of improvements and we're finally getting to the point where everybody's kind of settled in with each other and we're actually playing together as a team. The first half of the season has um, been pretty good. We started off uh, really hot and uh, we slowed down a little bit, but in all it is, it's been the best first half of the season I've been a part of um, in my three years of playing varsity, so it's been pretty good. The latter half of the season will see conference play increase with the Beavers trying to keep up with competitive GWAC teams as they will see multiple statewide ranked teams. Conference play is definitely harder for us because our league is very, very challenging. I think there's only like three schools that haven't had a player signed to play at the higher level. And so like looking back at it, like we're probably one of the toughest leagues in Kansas. Um, you know, it's a lot more exciting, a lot more intense than the first half of the season. So we're going to go in and we're going to give it all we have to beat these teams, um, mostly because we need to to um, get a good ranking for sub-state. But uh, it's just a different atmosphere this half of the season. As the season continues, expectations only get higher and higher for these teams, and they don't plan on backing down. Looking to improve on um, my turnovers and shot selection. I want to make sure that I'm getting the best shot I can. And uh, of course, that starts without turning over the ball, so we still have the ball to shoot finishing better around the basket as far as me and then as the team goes I just want to see us keep improving and grow together as a team. Basketball season is always a great time at SCHS for both the athletes and the community as a whole. With less than four home games left make sure you get out and support your fellow Beavers. With that for BBN I'm Sage Steckline. Thank you Sage. If you're not able to make it to the game you can watch from anywhere on the Beaver Broadcasting Network on YouTube. We might be in for a chilly weekend Delaney France has this weekend's weather. Thanks, ladies. The Beavers are back with more dropping temperatures for this weekend's weather. Today, the weather for Scott City, Kansas is a high of 40 and a low of 15. 
Saturday, the weather will continue to drop with temperatures of a high of 30 and a low of 3. Sunday, you can expect a high of 18 and a low of 0. It is possible we might get a little snow Sunday evening into Monday morning with a 30% chance. Have a great weekend, stay warm, and for BBN News, I'm Delaney France. Thanks, Delaney. Make sure to stay warm this weekend. Thank you for watching the BBN Weekly News. I'm Hannah Ferro. And I'm Jimena Garcia. To see the full BBN Weekly News episode, visit the BBN YouTube channel. Breakdown of the matchup also bringing starters, keys of the game, and the tip off after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. At Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner clean for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. S&T is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. With over 10 years of experience, Jamie at JW Enterprise can repair your windshield quickly and conveniently. Even if you don't have time to make it to the shop, Jamie can fix your windshield from your home or he can come get your vehicle for you. JW Enterprise is insured and Safe Flight certified. He might be operating under a different name, but Jamie still provides the same quality of service. Let Jamie at JW Enterprise fix that chip in your windshield now. Find JW Enterprise on Facebook or give him a call at 785 Two six zero seven 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 three. straight year playing Cimarron four two times in a year and Scott City's won the last three in this series they're eight no against the Blue Jays in this building and uh, Scott City looking to snap a three game losing streak well they've had the competition state ranked teams number two and three a southeast of Saline number nine and two a Sterling number six and four a Hugoton and they finally get off the unranked uh, or ranked dragon for opponents here tonight with the Cimarron Blue Jays. Scott City, they'll get Avery Knoll back in the lineup tonight. That'll be a plus. Who's out with sickness, but they will not have Eloy Ruelas, it sounds like, for the rest of the year with a sustained a broken thumb there, I believe it was, in the JV game on Tuesday. He ended up playing Tuesday night through it, but he will be out for the rest of the year in a tough break there off the bench there and a, kind of your backup point guard for Scott City, uh, but they'll have to adjust. And they have some players capable of stepping up and filling that hole there. As 
<laughs> as uh, Scott City will uh, be uh, looking to face a pretty good uh, team that's really struggling with confidence as of late. But uh, we shall see here tonight. Uh, Cimarron, they average just 45 points a game. Uh, they're led by Trace Copper. He averages 13.9 points a game. Really, they're two scorers, Copper and Beery. They start four seniors. Their team that's three and eight. They started at two and zero, oh, and they have lost seven of their la or eight of the last nine ball games. Are zero and one in conference play. As, as they lost to Lacrosse and Ellsworth in the uh, Hoising to Winter Jam. That they still haven't been able to play the seventh place game. They'll play that on February sixth as they'll take on the Cougars of Otis Bison. But Scott City looking to get back on the winning side and a favorable matchup for them here tonight against Cimarron. This was a tight game. Cimarron would lead a little bit in that third quarter, but then Scott City would able, was able to pull away in the fourth quarter and take it on the 13th of December, 55 to 44. Here is Scott City trying to get back to 500 with Hayes, Ulysses, and Lincoln coming to town in the next three games. As we will uh, get you set up here for the starting lineups here presented by Security State Bank here in Scott City in the Uta. And free bill pay and online banking, safe security, easy to use, member FDIC, equal housing lender. So we're about 15 minutes behind on the start time here. Uh, let's get to your starters tonight here presented, or once again by Security State Bank. For Scott City, coached by Brian Gentry in his seventh season. Assisted by Joey Meyer and Drew Kite. Dylan Metzger, the 6'1 senior, 10.8 points and two and a half rebounds a game. Avery Knoll, the 6'3 junior, 4.8 points, 4.3 boards a game. Alex Trango, 5'9 sophomore, 3.8 points, 1.4 boards a game. Jackson Rumford, the 6'5 sophomore. He had 17 and a half points and 8.8 .8 rebounds a game. And Lawson Bailey, the 6'1 senior, averaging 10 points and five and a half boards. Dylan Metzger, Avery Noel, Alex Trango, Jackson Rumford, and Lawson Bailey, the starting five for the Scott City Beavers. For the Blue Jays of Cimarron, they're co coached by Chris Chilton in his second season. He's assisted by Todd Hamilton and Tanner Seacrest. It'll be Trace Copper, the 5'8 sophomore, averaging 13.9 points, 2.4 assists per game. Lane Beery, the 6'4 senior, at 8.9 points and 2.3 rebounds a game. Alec Whitman, a 6'3 senior, 2 points and 2.8 rebounds a game. Also, David Mendez, a 5'7 senior, who averages 2.5 points and 1.4 rebounds a contest. And Zach Lopez, a 6'2 senior, he averages 5 points and 5.3 rebounds a game. Trace Copper, Lane Beery, Alec Whitman, David Mendez, and Zach Lopez, the starting five tonight here for the Blue Jays of Cimarron, who are three and eight on the year, 0 and one in the conference. Scott City, once again, six and seven overall, 0 and one in the conference. Other games tonight in the league, Holcomb and Colby meeting up. That counts toward the league standings. That game played at the Colby Vince Center. The Colby girls would beat Holcomb by two tonight, 44 to 42, by the way. And also, uh, you have uh, Ulysses and Huguenin. That is a non-league matchup. And Goodland on the road at Russell to take on the Broncos. As the Cimarron starters still getting introduced here. Remind you, the winter homecoming coming up on Tuesday night at the Scott Community Event Center. It'll be warm inside, despite the Arctic temperatures outside on Tuesday night. Six o'clock for the girls game of the boys to follow. As officials break the court, keys to the game presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. Keys tonight for Scott City. There's no question about it. You've got to pat it inside to run for work it inside, and that's where you can run your offense from there. Second key for Scott City, keep Copper and Beery in front of you. Limit them on their shots. They were one of their three-point shooters from the last game. It'll be... Lane Beery, Jackson Rumford to tip center circle. Scott City in the road, Columbia blue tops with the white numbers and letters and the dark blue trim. Scott City in their home whites with the light blue numbers and letters, dark blue trim. Jackson Rumford wins the tap as we're underway as it's in the hands of Alex Tarango. Scott City will have it into the front court here and Cimarron opens up in man to man. Bailey left side, uh, go high low into Rumford, off his hands and out of bounds. Good idea that time, just couldn't quite reel it in. Scott City had 16 turnovers against Huguenin on Tuesday night. They averaged 14 after the game. They've been better on their turnovers really up until the other night. Cimarron's first trip down the floor with the basketball into the hands of the sophomore, Trace Copper. He's guarded by his summer teammate, Alex Tarango, now driving right side as Lopez, blocked by Rumford, saves it into play and into the hands of Alex Tarango. Rumford had a, quite a stat line those first meet 
between the two schools as Rumford has it up top, open for three. Off to the left in the rebound to Avery Knoll has it, and he's going to be drawing a foul as Knoll. And already two offensive, or two boards for Scott City in their first 40 seconds. First foul on Simron. Get that on David Mendez, his first. Rumford had 20 points, 13 rebounds, six assists, and five block shots in the first meeting between these two schools. Bailey with it up top, now to Alex Tarango. Tarango lobs it right lane line. Here's Rumford's spin move, pivots, goes up, and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the year. Scott City really struggled the line on Tuesday night, just 5 of 13. They were 9 of 18 first time around between these two teams. And Zach Lopez with a foul, his first. Team second already, 46 seconds into the game. Rumford Scott City's leading scorer gets the Beavers on the board first with 7.14 to go. And already off the bench, Samuel Allen, a six-foot senior. He averages 5.3 points a game. This is a senior-loaded team, five seniors on their team, and they've all already checked in here in the early going as David Mendez sets down. Rumford second, rimming around, rimming around, and it drops. It's two to nothing. So, 2 nothing's your score. We've played nearly a minute. Copper up top goes to the right, and now in the hands of Lane Beery. Beery around the perimeter up top. Copper open for three. Good. He is 15-3 of the year. It's 3-2 to two with 6.59 to go third quarter on our first lead change of the night. And Simron applies some full-court pressure man-to-man, -man, but Scott City has it broke in three on two numbers. Rumford now to Trango driving in, he draws a foul on the floor. Already three team fouls on the Blue Jays in the first 73 seconds of the game. And Coach Chris Chung goes deeper to his bench. A foul, I believe, will be on Lopez. That'll be a second. And it is. Already two fouls on him. He had six points on Thursday night last week. He's They'll bring in Kate Sonde, a 6-1 freshman. As he did not play in the first meeting. Rumford, power dribble, now pivots, goes up, leaves it to his left, got his own rebound, and they're going to get a push underneath. They're going to get that on Cimarron. Wow. Already the fourth team foul in the Blue Jays. That'll be on Alec Whitman, his first. Four team fouls in the first minute, 19 on Cimarron. So they credited Rumford with position that time, and they'll say that Whitman undercut Rumford. Nolda triggered in. We'll lob it into Rumford. It's poked away, and already Scott City with two turnovers in the first three possessions, and then we're going to get a tie-up. It's still going to stay Cimarron Blue Jay ball. Chilton not getting any foul called his way his first, his first quarter and was frustrated with that. 6.37 to go first quarter. Cimarron with a one-point lead in the ball at 3-2. to two. Cimarron's biggest win of the year, no question, was their overtime win over Holcomb first game of the year, and Copper goes coast to coast. He has all five of Cimarron's points. They lead 5-2 to two with 6.20 to go first quarter, and a trap there, but Scott City breaks it. Triangle lead pass to Dylan Metzger, lobs it for Jackson Rufford, tried to catch Alley Hoop, couldn't, but right there is Alex Triangle to save the possession. Right side to Metzger, here's a three for the tie. Yes! Metzger just had a season low two points the other night. With the three, his 21st of the year ties the game at five with 6.06 to go first quarter. I think we, we had a stoppage of play. I think it was maybe a warning on Scott City for knocking the ball out. So that was the stoppage of play. Six or five, five were two minutes into this game. So Metzger, that gets Scott City going on the threes. They had just four threes in the first meeting and four threes on Tuesday night against Hugoton. Copper, nice feed right side to Sande. He'll split two defenders and score it. 7-5 Simron there. Three of three from the floor here with 5.46 to go. Here's Metzger the other way. He'll drive in all the way. He'll lay it up high off the glass. Wild shot. No run for the rebound. Power dribble gets stripped and stolen away. Turnover number three on Scott City already. 7-5 Simron with the lead and the ball. Five and a half to go first quarter. And now around the screen, here's Copper, short, rebound right to Alex Tarango for the rebound, and they finally miss one. Lead pass, Metzger down the floor. He'll take it all the way, finger roll, lay it home, and we're tied for a second time at 7. 5.19 to go first quarter. So we're tied at 7, 5.13 to go first quarter. As Copper walking across and slow the pace down. Man-to-man -man defense for Scott City. Dylan Duff will be the first off the bench for Scott City. Cimarron will send two to the scorer's table. Up top to Lane Beery. Left side, it goes over to Samuel Allen. Allen, one dribble back up top to Beery, guarded by Bailey. Back, it goes left to Allen with 4.50 to go. 
The pace favors Cimarron right here. They want to slow this game down. Scott City wants to speed him up. Copper bounce pass, but low, but picked up by Whitman. And now thrown up top, but saved by Samuel Allen. Allen with it. He'll go to his left. Pull back. 4.35 to go in the opening quarter. Tied at seven. Beery with it. Guarded by Metzger. Looking to drive in. Gets a screen. Now goes left corner to Copper. Turns down the three. Quickly guarded by Trengu. He'll drive in. His shot is good off the layup of the right hand. He has all nine of their points. 9-7, 4.23 to go first quarter. And now the pass is thrown away. Here is a shot off the glass and in for Whitman. It's 11-7, 4.16 to go first quarter. Scott City with four first quarter turnovers. They trail by four as we're near the midway mark of the first quarter. Metzger with it. Finds Rumford in transition. He will one hand throw it down. His fourth point, 11-9, 4.03 to go first quarter. That'll get the Scott City bench fired up. Midway point, first quarter, 11-9 for the Blue Jays. Seven of those from Copper. Scott City has five for Metzger, four for Rumford. Right side, it goes over to Allen. Allen with it out high, guarded by Metzger. And now they work it in to Whitman up top. Here's a three for Beery. Bounces off the left and Lawson Bailey with the board for Scott City. Beavers with it for transition is Metzger. He'll weave his way through back up top to Tarango for a straightaway triple. Bounces off to the right, but rebound tipped and in the hands of Allen for Cimarron. Good opportunity that time, but couldn't get the shot to drop home. 3.15 to go first quarter. Sky City down two. Cimarron's ball at 11 9. Sonday left side up top to Copper. Goes right side to Allen. He'll launch a three. Bounces around and off. Rebound in the hands of Beery. It's follow up no. And the rebound wrestled away. And a whistle and a foul. That'll be on Lane Beery. That'll be his first. And Cimarron's fifth team foul already. With 3.02 to go first quarter, Dylan Duff in for Scott City, Larius Pepper and David Mendez in for the Blue Jays, who lead Scott City 11-9. As they will stay with their full court pressure man-to-man, -man. Scott City, other than one time, has done a good job breaking it. Avery Knoll with it, finds Jackson Renford now to, uh, to uh, Dylan Metzger. He'll drive to the left block, cutting Avery Knoll, floats one up, no rebound in the hands of Larius Pepper. 11-9, 2.50 to go, first period of play. Scott said he's hit three of their first seven shots, make that three of their first eight. Cimarron has hit five of the first nine. 235 to work first quarter. Copper with it up top. Goes right with the pass to Larius Pepper. He almost stolen away. Scott City with the 2-3 zone, almost a walk. Now Copper turns down the three, drives left baseline underneath the basket, wraparound pass. Mendez right corner three, good. His 6-3, Cimarron with two. And they lead 14 to nine with 2.18 to go first quarter. Here's Metzger, loses the dribble and loses the handle. And Cimarron forces Scott City into the fifth. Turnover and a timeout on the floor. With 2.12 to go first quarter, it's a 30 second Blue Jay timeout and they are fired up, leading by five, 14 to nine. Basketball here brought to you tonight here by Precision Ag and Seed, our brother's auto body mechanic. Our brother, or, or correction, our and our pallet, Richards Financial Services, Roden Bean Green Agency, Scott City Eye Center, Scott City Pharmacy Giftologist, Scott Community Foundation, Scott Cooperative Association. Also, Scott County Hospital, Scott County Record, and Scott Pro. Right now, Scott City's letting Cimarron dictate the pace, and they have the 14-9 lead, but Cimarron's also been hitting a lot of their shots, but Scott City's also committed five turnovers in this first quarter. Cimarron, six of 10 from the field in this first quarter already. Scott City just four of their first nine, but five turnovers. Even though they have not committed a foul, that's a moot point early on. It's 14-9. You gotta feel like the percentage will go down for Cimarron as we're down to the final two minutes of this first quarter. Copper, the ball, he has seven of Cimarron's 14 points. They've had four Blue Jays score in this first quarter and he'll just dribble it out high. They want this slow pace. Scott City needs to try to speed him up. They go back to man-to-man. -man. Copper, good defense by Bailey out in front of him as he uses up his dribble. Now right corner goes to Miguel Ramirez in for the first time, a six-foot sophomore. Now left side to Copper, back up top. Here's Larius Pepper, drives in the paint. He'll take it, scoop shot, no. And the rebound, the follow-up, good. Miguel Ramirez makes it 69, 138 to go first quarter. Man. Scott City gave up a second chance opportunity to steal, and the shot is good. And it's now 18 to nine with 1.30 to go first quarter. Scott City with six turnovers in this first quarter as the ball knocked out of bounds. As Larius Pepper with that basket, and right now Cimarron on a 7-0 run. They're on an 
to two run over the last three minutes. And transition, here's Avery Noel. He'll get the layup, and Scott City ends that run. His first basket, 18 to 11, 118 to go first quarter. But right now, Simron has forced Scott City into six turnovers, and they lead it by seven as we're down to the final minute of this first quarter. And that's going to be a 10 count and the first turnover of the night for Cimarron. That time, Copper took too much time there. The official had the count all in it the whole time. And Scott City needs to take advantage of this turnover here. With 66 seconds to go in the opening period at 18 to 11. Metzger being trapped in the backcourt, finds an open Dylan Duff, skips it over right side to Lawson Bailey. Trying to get it into Rumford. He does right baseline. Now back up top, and it's going to be a bad pass and a seventh turnover. Here's a steal, and that's going to be a travel by David Mendez. Simron's second turnover. Not the best ball movement by Scott City in this first quarter. Two turnovers have been too, way too many. Seven. They trail by seven of 50.8 to go first quarter. Metzger lob it in the backcourt to Lawson Bailey. 18-11 your score. Now goes to... Dylan Metzger, bullet pass thrown away, trying to get it, and then Simron loses it out of bounds. The teams will trade turnovers. It's gotten sloppy here. Third turnover by Simron, already eight on Scott City with 42 seconds here in the opening period. 18 to 11, Blue Jay lead. They've averaged 45 a game, already have 18. Good position for Rumford, who will put it up for two from point blank. He has six, 18-13. 35 seconds to go first quarter in Scott City for the first time tonight with a little rally. They've scored the last four points of this ball game to get it to within five. 25 seconds to go first quarter. Larius Pepper with it up top. Goes left for the pass to David Mendez. Mendez steps back, guarded by Duff. And now back up top, it'll go to Miguel Ramirez with 15 seconds to go first quarter. Ramirez holds it. Now will dribble, or correction, Larius Pepper. Down to 10, 9, 8, so, or backdoor cut ball. That's last touch by Simron. Good defense. They try to get the backdoor cut to David Mendez. And that's the fourth turnover in the last five possessions for Simron with 6.4 to go first quarter. Noel inbounded in. Duff with it. The ball pass thrown away. And here's a shot blocked by Noel. And then the rebound. Boy, that's a late whistle. And they're going to call a foul on Simron with 2.2 to go first quarter. Scott City commits turnover number nine. That's Alec Whitman's second, sixth Cimarron foul. Scott City's yet to commit a foul here with 2.2 to go first quarter. The Blue Jays will apply full court pressure. And Brian Gentry is going to burn a 30 second timeout with 2.2 to go first quarter at 18 13 for Cimarron, who's led it most of the way here in this opening eight minutes. But really, the Beavers, their own worst enemy. Nine first quarter turnovers, other than a couple of times they've handled these full court press by Cimarron. They've had five from Rumford and five from Metzger in that first quarter. But Trace Copper got the scoring started with seven. Uh, all right, and uh, it's a five-point game here. But already five different Blue Jays have scored in this first quarter. 2.2 to go, 131, three, one, three quarters court. Rumford will inbound it in. He'll get it to Metzger in the backcourt. One second, he'll fire up a 60 footer. He's got a chance and it hits the side of the, or off the top of the backboard on the right. Third quarter is coming to an, or first quarter is coming to an end. 18 11, Beavers down by seven. Back in a minute for the second. This is Scott City basketball. Feedyard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feedyard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers the world
here on KSKL Scott City. Scott City was 50% shooting in the first quarter, but had nine turnovers and no fouls. They trail 18-13 going into the second. They had rebounded the Blue Jays 6-4. And here we go with the second quarter of play. The Beavers were led by Jackson Rufford 6-5 for Dylan Metzger, 7 for Trace Copper to lead the Blue Jays. And Rufford goes up and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws. Lane Beery commits the foul as first. Seven fouls on Scott, or on Semron, not on Scott City. Rumford to line to shoot two. It's pretty lopsided. I'll be honest, or no, yeah, Beery, correction, that is his second. Rumford with two free throws. The first is perfect. He is now three of three at the line. He has seven, 18, 14. Scott City whittling away at this deficit. They trailed by nine at one point, and now it's down to four. 7.48 to go first half. Second free throw also good. He has eight. 18-15. And now Scott City applying a little pressure in the backcourt. Briggs with it. And now stolen away into Avery No. He'll bake it off, and it's a one-point game, 18-17. Cimarron's fifth turnover. Knoll's fourth point. It's a one-point game. Seconds into the second quarter. Here are the Blue Jays and Copper almost double dribbles with it. Ball poked by Knoll as he rallies back, and Scott City with an 8-0 run. Cimarron was 5 of 9 on twos in that first quarter and two of four on threes. They were seven of 13, a whistle and a foul. We got a push. And that'll be Scott City's first foul of the night with 7.26 to go first half. Dylan Metzger picks up foul number one and breaks the eight minute 34 second streak. Without a foul for Scott City as Alex Tarango will check in. The Beavers have only gone to a six player rotation in this first half. That's Tarango replaces Dylan Duff. So Scott City back with their starting five out on the court. Seconds into the second quarter. Don't expect uh, Copper to come off the court much, either Lane Beery. Those two will play a big bulk of the minutes. Left side now driving in. Here's Briggs. Cut off. Needs help underneath. And a whistle and a foul by Metzger. He picks up back-to-back -back fouls. Cimarron has already played 10 players in this second or this first half. Second foul on Metzger, second team foul. Lob up top to Miguel Ramirez. Right side, here's Copper. Spin move, goes to his right, backs up. Uses up a dribble, 7.05 to go first half, 18-17. Scott City leads, Cimarron with the ball. Briggs with it, goes around the perimeter left, and now it's to Lane Beery. He's out there with two fouls. Trent Briggs with it. Bounce pass up top to Beery. And Scott City bench trying to cheer the team on on defense. They've come out with a little bit more spirit here in the last couple minutes of the game. But Copper will step back and miss the three. No, will save it into play and knocks it off of Miguel Ramirez. And Scott City with a chance to retake the lead. It'll be their first lead since two to nothing. And with it is Jackson Rump from the front court. Here was 6.38 to go first half. Underneath, here's Lawson Bailey. Yes, and one! Bailey with his first basket, and Scott City on a 10-0 run to go up 19-18 with 6.35 to go first half. His first shot attempt as well. And Trace Copper with his first. Eighth Blue Jay foul, two on Scott City, but all those have been on Metzger. He'll exit with two fouls as Camden Volgamore enters for the first time, the six-foot sophomore. Bailey to the line, where he struggled a bit this year, just 43%. He was 2 of 5 on Tuesday night and had 12 points. The free throw too strong, and the rebound to Trent Briggs of Cimarron, and a whistle and a foul on Scott City. That'll be on Jackson Rumford, his first, and already Scott City's third foul of the half in the first 88 seconds of the second quarter. 19-18, Scott City back up by a point. Cimarron's ball as the Beavers will apply some full-court pressure here with 6.32 to go first half. Cimarron inbounds it into Trent Briggs. He still has it in the backcourt. Now he'll get it out to Lane Beery, almost thrown away. Now behind Briggs, it's loose, but picked up by Briggs. He'll save the possession, just get it across to avoid the 10 count. And now they'll throw it away. Good defense by Scott City. And turnover number six on Cimarron. The Beavers can add to their one-point lead. His back end will be Samuel Allen to replace Trent Briggs. In a 3-8 and eight season, you have to wonder, maybe Coach Chilton playing some of these players that did not play against Scott City the first time around. He's just trying to get some minutes for some young kids and build up his program and get some experience out there in a whistle. And we got a timeout for Coach Brian Gentry, and it'll be a full timeout. We'll take it as well. 6-12 to go first half. 
It's Scott City 19, Cimarron 18. Back in a minute, this is Beaver Basketball. It's more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms. Scott City's ball out of their timeout, 19-18. The 6-12 to go first half as the Beavers to inbound it. Volgamore gets it into Jackson Rumford. Rumford with it. Bounce pass to Camden Volgamore. And now a high to Rumford to Alex Charango. He'll drive right side, and he's cut off by Copper. Six minutes to go first half. Rumford goes left side to Lawson Bailey. Head fake. Pulls up for the 17-footer. Short rebound in the hands of Rumford. Gets a strip and picked up by Charango. Stuffed. Rumford. With from point blank, good for two. 21-18, a 12-0 Scott City run with 5.45 to go first half. And Scott City with a couple opportunities there, finally get one to go down. As the Beavers with a three-point lead, their largest of the night, and Cimarron is going to throw it away for their seventh turnover of the night. As Cimarron will bring back in David Mendez. He'll replace Samuel Allen. So Scott City on a 12-0 run. 5.37 to go first half. They're up three. They've been down by as many as nine in this first half. Inbound into Lawson Bailey. Finds Alex Tarango. Scott City breaks the press. To Volgamore now to Rumford. Touch pass layup. Good. Rumford with 12. And it's 23-18 with 5.28 to go first half. And make it a 14-0 Scott City run. Cimarron trying to inbound it. They just get it in to avoid the five count to Cade Sonde. And now to David Mendez who lobs it across the half course drive to Beery. Copper turns down the deep three. Drives underneath the basket. Wrap around right into Alex Trango's hands. Turnover number eight. Here's Trango with a dribble. Finds Lawson Bailey. Five minutes to go first half. Scott City looking out of their 14-0 run. Up by 5-23-18. Rumford goes right side to Camden Volgamore. Doesn't use the screen. Drives right side back to Rumford right wing. He'll launch a three. Yes! Rumford his 11th triple of the year is 26-18. Make it a 17-0 Beaver run. 4.48 to go first half. And now whistling a foul in the backcourt. That'll be team foul number four on Scott City. I believe they're going to get Volgamore and they do. That'll be Camden Volgamore's first. Team foul number four. Substitution into the Blue Jay lineup. It'll be Logan Heddleston, another freshman, a 5'11", replacing the 6'1 freshman, Cade Sande. Scott City up by eight. They were down nine just about five minutes ago. At 18-9, they're up 26-18, and Cimarron has the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Beavers. 26-18 oh. <laughs> your score. <laughs> Oh, the young kids have a little fun there. Lob underneath, nice cut, Beery high up the glass, so he bricked it. Rebound saved into play into the hands of Lawson Bailey from Alex Tarango. Scott City can add to this big run here, and Bailey almost walks with it. Back up top, left side, here's Volgamore looking to drive in, but up top to Bailey, 4-3. Yo, halfway to out. Camden Volgamore the rebound and the follow. No. Rumford, no. Avery Knoll underneath finds Alex Trango steps back. Almost launched the three. And now here's Volgamore with it. Scott City with another crack at it. And now here's a shot and a blocking foul. Avery Knoll will go to line for, I believe, at least a one and one. It'll be team foul number nine with 3.56 to go first half. Foul on Trace. So Trace Copper now has his second foul. Cimarron has Lane Beery, Trace Copper, Alec Whitman, David Lopez, each with two fouls. And so that's a big blow for Cimarron as they'll bring in Trent Briggs to replace Copper. 
One and one for Avery Knoll, who's 42% on the year at the line. Scott City tonight, four of five at the charity line. Make it five of six. Knoll with five in the game, he'll get the bonus. He had six in the first meeting. Apologize well, for the technical issues. 28-18. Now we're back to action here. Sorry about that, folks. And the turnovers as Avery Knoll hit both of his free throws. Cimarron with nine turnovers here in the first half as we're down to three and a half to go before halftime. 28-18 is your score. Scott City has shut out Cimarron in this second quarter. They're on a 19-0 run. Three is too strong. Sage Steklon in the game for the first time, and he's going to pick up the foul over the back. That'll be his first. Team foul number five in the half on the Blue Jays. 3.22 to go first half. 28-18. That's a 19-0 Scott City run. We apologize for the technical issues there, but we're back here to action. 3.13 to go, bounce pass into the front court to David Mendez at 28-18, and now Berry open for a three, short. Cimarron can't find a basket here in this second quarter, and Scott City with an easy clear out in transition to Steckline, reels it in, finds a cutting, Volgamore, he'll flip it up, no, but he's got two free throws coming his way. Two free throws coming up here with 2.58 to go first half, and that's Lane Berry's third foul, and already 10 fouls on the Blue Jays this half with 2.58 to go before halftime. Volgamore, three of six in varsity play this year from the line, making four of seven his first point. 29-18, 2.58 to go first half. As Kate Sonde, Kate and Sonde in for Lane Beery, sits down with three fouls. Scott Suddy was down 18-9 with 1.30 to go first quarter. And they miss the second. Rumford grabs the board, finds a cutting train go underneath. Goes up, tough shot, and he muscles it through for his first basket. 31-18 with 2.50 to go first half. Scott City on a 22-0 run over the last seven minutes, and now Cimarron loses it out of bounds for their 12th turnover, or make that their 10th turnover of the half. The Coy Vans in for the first time. And Lane Beery returns in. He has three fouls, so Coach Chris Chilton, desperation mode, will send out his starter, Lane Beery, to line up with three fouls. Actually, he'll bring Beery back out and bring Sam Allen back in. 2.43 to go first half. Inbound to Lawson Bailey. A 22-0 run for Scott City. They're up 31-18, up top to Coy Vance. He had two points against Cimarron the first meeting. Now out left Alex Tarango, turns down the three. He'll drive in, and that's going to be a charge. It was, that was correct all the way. Offensive foul taken by Samuel Allen. By the way, what helped Scott City? They did not commit a turnover until then. That's their, that's their first turnover of the quarter, 10th for the game. 16th foul on Scott City as Durango picks up his first foul. Scott City has all six of the fouls in the second quarter. Cimarron has been whistled for 10. 2.25 to go first half as Trango checks out. Dylan Duff back in for the Beavers. 31-18 your score. And now stepping back left side, here is Trent Briggs with it, guarded by Coy Vance. Vance with it, now to Samuel Allen. Allen with it, guarded by Duff out high. Two minutes to go first half. Here's David Mendez with it. Scott City turned up their intensity after they were down 18-9, and they have been on a 22-0 run over the last seven and a half minutes. Cimarron has not scored since the 130 mark of the first quarter. They went up 18-9. That place was rocking for them. It's turned in a hurry. And now underneath it goes to Sande. Bounce pass in the paint. Shot up good. Logan Heddleston, his first basket. That'll end the 22 will run third. He won 20 with 138. And then a steal off the inbounds almost. Scott City saves possession. Steckline finds Jackson Rumford. Goes to his left. Cut off. Now Coy Vance. He'll drive the left baseline. Wrap around to Lawson Bailey. Right corner. Triple. Yes. 
Bailey hits the three. It's 18, 34, 20, 121 to go first half. And Scott City with a couple of triples almost force a steal. Still with his Briggs Hill pass in the front court left to David Mendez. Final 70 seconds before the break. Off the screen left side, Allen will launch an answer back three. No, rebound lost to Bailey. His second board and a whistle, ball knocked out with 65 first quarter seconds to go first half. 31 to, or 34 20 for Scott City's Nolan for Sage Steklon, who played some pretty good minutes. So, Coach Brian Gentry, who went to a really a six player rotation for most of this first half, put in three subs late as they build up a big lead. 55 seconds, a miscommunication. Just, you can save it into play, but they will not. You can jump and then throw it back. It wouldn't be over and back, but you know, a good hustle, try to get it it's over and back Scott City's 11th turnover of the half back to Simron 53 and a half first quarter seconds left 34 20 Scott City with the lead Simron with the ball they'll get it up top to David Mendez this is a 25 to 2 Scott City run since they trailed 18 and 9 Samuel Allen now up high left to Trent Briggs. Simron with a lot of foul trouble in the first half. Trace Copper with two. Lane Beery with three. Zach Lopez with two. Alec Whitman with two. Bounce pass. Here's Mendez with it. He'll drive in, but throw it up top to Briggs with 30 seconds to go. Backing it or now into Sande from Heddleston, who has the lone points for the Blue Jays this quarter. It's been a 21 to 2 second quarter run on its own for the Beavers. With 18 seconds to go first half, and now the pace favors the Blue Jays. They're just trying to escape out of here, being down by no more than they are. Now that one's good deep. Oh, almost knocked it off the, the leg of Heddleston, but they'll say last touch by Avery Knoll. With 9.2 seconds to go first half. Cimarron just right now in survival mode. <laughs> the, the announcer thought that there may have been a sub, but they saw, I think, they saw one of those members from the Beaver Broadcasting Network sitting there near the scores table. And there's a moving screen off the inbounds. Logan Heddleston is first. Inbound in, 9.2 to go first half. Lawson Bailey drives the left sideline. He gets tripped up, but he'll take it all the way. He will lay it up and score it. His finger roll layup in. He has seven all in this quarter, 36 to 20. And that's the end of your first half. Scott City will go on a 27 to two run over the final 918 of the first half and lead it 36 to 20 at the break. We'll step aside for this three minute break. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. And has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden, OD, today. about so much more than just providing the technology. It's about enriching the communities we live in. Because your community is our community. Where you live, where you work, where you play, we do too. Whatever you do, and wherever you are, our service supports you. Next Tech Wireless, we are Kansas.
Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC, and as always, Go Beaver! Women at every state. Halftime show once again presented by Precision Ag and Seed. Adam could be with you here from. Cimarron High School, and I'll forewarn you, we're going to have a lengthy halftime. They put there's 17 minutes of the halftime, so a little heads up there, folks. We're going to have a lengthy halftime. 36-20, Scott's in the lead. They were down 18-9. They would go on a 27-2 run in the final nine minutes and 18 seconds of the first half to go up by 16 at the break. And... And we'll get to some of their first half stats. They did not have a rebound at Cimarron in that second half, or second quarter, excuse me. They had no rebounds in the second quarter, which I don't know if I've seen that in a long, long time. But they had 18 points after the first quarter and 20 at the break. So beware for a lengthy halftime here. We'll do our best to keep it going. First half stats. Let's get to those here. Enough of me. 15 points for Jackson Rumford. He had nine in the second quarter, including a three. Six for Avery Knoll. Seven for Lawson Bailey, all coming in that second quarter. Five for Dylan Metzger. He sat down most of the second quarter with two fouls. All of his points coming in the first. Two for Alex Tarango. One for Camden Bulgamore in the first half for the Beavers. Uh, for Scott City in the first half, they had six fouls, 11 turnovers, two steals, seven defensive rebounds. They had seven offensive boards for total, 14 rebounds. They dominated the glass in the first half, 14 to four. That was pretty lopsided there. First half for Cimarron, Trace Copper ended up with seven. He had all those in the first quarter. He only attempted one shot in the second quarter, but they also had he also had some foul trouble. He picked up two second quarter fouls. Uh, after that, he had a three for David Mendez on a first quarter three. Larius Pepper, Alec Whitman, Miguel Ramirez, Kate Sonde all with two, and Logan Hedleston off the bench with their lone point of the second, or lone basket of the second quarter with two. And uh, Cimarron ended up playing 11 players in that first half. The Blue Jays had 10 fouls, 11 turnovers. They had eight steals. Scott City, they turned up the intensity on the defensive end in the second quarter. Two defensive rebounds, two offensive boards for total of four first half rebounds. We'll talk a recap of the girls game as well. We'll also have uh, some wrestling results after the first day of the Rocky Welton. And more stats from this game here at halftime. 36-20 Cimarron trailing the Scott City Beavers are on the boys side of the break. We'll step aside for three more minutes. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org.
Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. Shambles Roofing has you covered since 1993. They are prepared for any job like maintenance and repair, an upgrade, or a new install. They provide the best customer service for residential and commercial roofing. Looking to upgrade to a metal roof? They can do that as well. If you have any existing damage or are looking for a roof that will last for years to come, don't wait to get a free consultation. Visit their website, shamblessroofing.com, by scanning the QR code on screen now. If you are in the market... Garden City tomorrow for the Rocky Welton. That'll begin at around 9 o'clock. Scott City boys were tied for 10th after the first day with uh, Great Bend with 83 points. So good first day uh, for Scott City. Uh, Pine Creek, a pretty solid team. Uh, of course, they're coached by a uh, four-time state champion from St. Francis and uh, uh, Billy Gable. They have the lead after the first day. Andale, who's the number one ranked team in 4A number two, and and uh, Rose Hill is the number two ranked team in 4A, their third place after the first day. Uh, but for Scott City, I'll get to their results here. Do -do -do -do. Here is, uh, we fiddle with track wrestling. By the way, when you go to track wrestling, you look for a state, you learn that there's more than 50 states because they include countries in there. But anyways, uh, for Scott City, they still have wrestling tomorrow. Evan Fry, he can get in the top 12, it looks like, uh, tomorrow. Uh, he had a, a Let's see, one, two, he had a one and two day overall head to head. Waylon Ricker will be in the top 16. He had a one and two day as well. Tyler Roberts is knocked out. Also, Trenton Frank was knocked out. Aiden Preston will be in the top 12. He had a uh, two and two day today. Uh, Cesar Peregrino will be in the top 12. He had a uh, two and two day as well. Colin McDaniel, he went four and oh today. He's gonna be in the championship finals tomorrow at 150 pounds. I believe it's the first Scott City wrestler uh, since 2018, possibly, that uh, is in the champ or, or 19, that's in the championship finals. Uh, but uh, first time in a few years, but that's good to see you there. Blaze Gossman had a rough day. He went one and two. Uh, Houston Frankie made it to the semifinals, but lost. He'll be in the top six. Jacob Irwin will be in the top eight. That's a good day for him. He uh, went uh, two and one on the day. <laughs> as uh, one Rodriguez will be in the top 16 and Tanner Gooden he made it to the semifinals but lost to a pretty good wrestler from Pine Creek in the semis he'll be a top six finisher so uh, interesting the uh, royalty they actually do a dance here so that's their winter homecoming here tonight at halftime so that's why there's such a lengthy halftime here and so now they have the court uh, to and the royalty to come out and bring the flowers and the basketball and the crown as well so we're going to have a longer halftime. Let's take another three-minute break. We're going to burn some commercials. Thank our sponsors as well. Halftime 36-20. Scott City up by 16 at intermission. Back in three minutes, this is Scott City Beaver basketball.
If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealership in Scott City. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Chaplin at Chaplin Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Chaplin Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. you describe your career? Rewarding. It's, it's more than just a job. Great vacation, great sick pay. Great opportunities to move forward. Good work environment, good people. Always something new, always something different. Every day you learn something new. Their commitment to education is second to none. They pay for my school. I, I love it because we're all big, one big happy family. 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 It's like a family. Grow your career with American Implement and John Deere. Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. I didn't mean it like that. Didn't want to make it sound that bad. A 36 to 20 is your halftime score for Scott City Boys. They lead over the Cimarron Blue Jays here. As now they can warm up, I think. They have 10 minutes on the clock. They've stopped it there. I think they need to cut that down by a few minutes, but they haven't asked for my opinion. It's a moot point. Anyways, uh, for the first half, as Scott City shot the ball 13 to 23 in the first half. Uh, they shot at 13 to 23. And that was uh, good for 52 or 57%. So they shot the ball pretty well in this first half. Uh, they were three of six on three, 10 of 17 on twos. And from the foul line, seven of nine. Cimarron was not bad. They were eight of 18 in the first half for 44%. Two of seven on threes, six of 11 on twos, and from the charity line, that well, they were they did not attempt a free throw. They got into foul trouble pretty early. Well, they're going to have a long second half here. It's, they've got nine minutes and 20 seconds of halftime warm up. Whew. Uh, so we're going to be here a little longer. Scott City with the lead, 36 to 20. We'll recap the girls' game real quickly from earlier today. 
uh, Scott said he really had a tough one against Cimarron tonight, and the Lady Beavers fell earlier here by the count of 57 to 43. Got down by as many as 24 in the game, but cut it to within 14 on a couple occasions, including the end. Uh, Cimarron led unofficially by Michaela Miller's 28 points. And Scott said he Brooks Strine had a career best 28 points. They both had double doubles today. Uh, Cimarron at, at Miller 28 and 16 rebounds. Uh, she is uh, Creighton Blue Jay signees. Brooks Strine 28 and 10, her fourth double double of the season. I don't know, can I? I don't know. Yeah, there we go. I can. All right, yeah, I'm talking, I'm getting harassed here. Anyways, uh, 57 43, Lady Beavers, they fall. Uh, to six and eight on the year and oh and to the conference Cimarron though is now 11 and two they are one and one in the league as I mentioned earlier on the girls side tonight Colby beating Holcomb 44 to 42 also uh, on the uh, boy, uh, girls side uh, Hugerton all over Simmer or uh, Ulysses tonight 51 to 15 and the Goodland Cowgirls they had no problem tonight with the Russell Lady Broncos as that was a 55 to 15 thrashing, or make that 58 14 thrashing. That was 45 to five at halftime. Uh, right now, some scores in the, on the boys' side in the GWAC. Russell leading Goodland going into the fourth quarter, 46 to 41. Uh, Hugoden and Ulysses battling. That's a non league game considered. And uh, I'll try to get an update on that one here as well while we have a chance. We have a lot of time to burn here. Hugoton, that, that's actually gone final. Hugoton boys route Ulysses tonight, 83 to 38. So that's a final there. Hugoton's boys have now won 11 in a row as they're now 12 and two on the year. So 83, 38, Hugoton boys all over uh, Ulysses tonight. We'll try to get a Colby uh, Holcomb boys basketball score. Uh, momentarily here while we have this chance. Of course, Scott City will be in action on Tuesday. They'll host the Hayes High Indians. They will play. Uh, it'll be the winter homecoming on Tuesday, by the way. Six o'clock for the girls, boys to follow. All right, and, and then it's Ulysses next Friday. And then it is, let's see here, uh, Lake in the following Tuesday. So some pretty big games coming up. By the way, Colby on top of Holcomb, 57 to 41. That's approaching three minutes to go there in the Colby Event Center. So Colby, uh, looking like they're going to snap from a, or bounce back from a two-game losing streak and get the win there. Let's take our final break. Get you set up for the second half and kind of recap this first half again. Back in another three-minute break here on Mix 94.5. dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. At Turner Sheet Metal, our main goal is to enhance the comfort of your home while making sure that our customers are 100% satisfied. Need your furnace checked for the winter? Call us. Need your air conditioner cleaned for the summer? Our Nate certified technicians are the guys for the job. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant authorized dealer in Scott City, can also help you save up to 40% on your heating and cooling costs with a Bryant Evolution system. Call for a free estimate and let us help keep your family comfortable and safe. Turner Sheet Metal, South Highway 83 in Scott City. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We're more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. S&T is proud to be your family. 
your friends, your neighbor. With over 10 years of experience. Jefferson Street in Scott City. You can also sign up online at scottrec.org. For over 80 years, hey, bring it back. Services agents have built relationships with you one conversation at a time. They're as committed. Hey, bring it back after this next commercial. As part of your community, they're here for you, answering insurance questions and helping make sure your financial goals are on track. Contact Farm Bureau agent Neil Baker and Dr. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. All right, we're ready to start this second half. A lengthy halftime. Thanks for bearing with us. 38 to or 36 to 20 for Scott City, and and about uh, this is a long halftime, by the way. This is about a 23-minute halftime. Zimmer on ball to begin the third quarter. Scott City will have Alex Trango, Avery Noel, Dylan Metzger, Lawson Bailey, and Jackson Rumford. Zimmer on with David Mendez, Trace Copper, Zach Lopez, also Miguel Ramirez, and also Alec Whitman. Third quarter officially underway. These Blue Jay balls, they move right to left. As I mentioned, uh, both teams are the starting five on the floor. Copper had foul trouble in that first half, and that allowed him to set down most of the first half. He had seven points on that first quarter. Left side to David Mendez. Mendez regarded by Alex Stranger. They set a screen for Copper in left corner. He goes around Metzger. He'll drive in. His shot swatted out of there by Scott City. Here they have numbers. Here's Lawson Bailey splitting the defenders. Goes up. No. Rebound tipped around and into the hands of Whitman, but then stolen by Rumford. He has 17. He ends up with the board in the follow up. And it's now 38 to 20. 7.18 to go first quarter, or third quarter, excuse me. Off the uh, miss from Bailey. So Avery Noel, that stuff on the other end. Here's Copper racing it back the other way. Pump fake. Whitman goes up. No. Rebound Avery Noel, his third board of the night. And Scott City with it. They're on a 29-2 run in this ball game as we're one minute into the second half. Left side, it goes to Avery Noel. It fakes the pass. Now we'll lob it high low to Rumford. A little too far as he gets tripped up, and it's Copper's hands. Uh, turnover number 12. Copper will race it two on two numbers. He'll go around Bailey, lay it up, and won't get it, but he's fouled. Lawson Bailey will pick up the foul as first. Team's first to the half for Scott City. And two free throws for Copper, where he's 70% on the air. First trip to the line tonight for the Blue Jays. They're a team that shoots 55% of the team. Coppers are second best free throw shooter behind Lane Beery. First free throw is good, and he has eight. First point since the first quarter for him, 38-21, 6.45 to go third quarter. It's hard to believe. Scott City was down 18-9 with a minute 30 to go first quarter. Free throw is good for Copper. He has nine. 38-22. Scott City breaks the full court press. They have three on two numbers. Rumford will drive in, and he'll get it stripped out of his hands. Turnover number 13, back-to-back -back Scott City turnovers. And Mendez with it. Now up top to Copper with 6.30 to go. Third quarter just underway here in this second half. 16-point Scott City lead. They've led by as many as 18. Copper gets a screen, goes to his left, steps back, and now will drive in. We'll flip it behind him. To Alec Whitman, he has not attempted a three this year, so not a threat. Miguel Ramirez guarded by Dylan Metzger. Scott City goes man-to-man. -man. Now Mendez looking to drive left, but cut off by Tarango. Good defense by Tarango as Mendez forced out high. Here's a screen for Copper. Turns down the three. Goes his right. Now goes to his left. Good defense by Scott City helping out, rotating. Yeah, I have a five count on him. That's a turnover. Good defense by Lawson Bailey. A five count forces a turnover. With 5.57 to go third quarter. 16-point Scott City lead with the ball back at 38-22, and the Blue Jays will continue to apply full-court pressure. 
team that's 3-8 and eight on the air. They've lost eight of their last nine games. Now Metzger's trapped in the backcourt, but Scott City will help him out. Now they have two on two numbers. Here's Alex Trango, his layup on the right side. He has four, 40-22 to 22 with 5.46 to go third quarter. So Scott City answers back. Cimarron almost lost it there with Mendez. As Scott City applies a little pressure in the backcourt, 5.35 to work. They've gotten a 10 count on Cimarron to nine to five count in this ball game with their defense. Copper out high, guarded by Tarango. As I mentioned, Tarango and Copper were teammates in summer ball, so they know each other pretty well. Left side to Miguel Ramirez. He'll drive in on Lawson Bailey, but cut off. Back out high. Yeah, he uses up his dribble. 5.18 to go, third stanza. With the left side is Mendez, guarded by Metzger, steps back. Goes left, Copper, guarded by Tarango. Wants to shake him off. He'll drive underneath the basket. His play up blocked that time. And it was, oh, that's a late foul. <laughs> My goodness. That was a very late delay. It looked like it was all ball. And that'll be on Avery Knoll, looks like, his first. Team's second of the half with 5.06 to go third quarter. So Trace Copper with two more free throws coming up. Interesting call there. Free throw high, oh, short on that one. <laughs> Substitution in. That's Lane Beery. He'll replace Miguel Ramirez. 5.06 to go here in the third. Second free throw is good. He hits one out of two, makes it 40 to 23. 5.06 left in the third, so he has 10. And now Cimarron traps, they get it to Trango. Scott said he's broken that all but a couple of times here tonight. Now into Rumford, he, not a clean pass, it's loose, still loose, still loose, and it's gonna be picked up by the Blue Jays. Scott City with their 14th error of the night. And 4.45 to work here in the third. 17 point game, a screen and a three. Too strong, rebound Jackson Rumford out. Jumps everybody for the board. Here come the Beavers back the other way up, 17. 4.30 to go, third stanza. It's Lawson Bailey with it. And now Rumford with it, goes right side with a pass to Alex Tarango. Tarango can't lob it in, now Metzger up top. Ball vague, he'll drive in. Dish it behind him to Rumford, catches it, power dribbles, goes to his right, and he's fouled going up. He'll get two free throws. That foul will be on Alec Whitman, his third. First of the half on Cimarron with 4.17 to go, third period. Rumford was 17 tonight. Two free throws coming up. First one is good. It hit the lip of the rim and dropped home. 41-23 with 4.17 to go, third quarter. Sam Allen back in. And it's Brooks Bailey in for the first time, the 5'10 sophomore. He was scoreless the first meeting and also Tuesday night. And Rumford now has 19 as he sinks them both down. 42-23, Scott City's largest lead of the night now in 19. 4.14 to go third quarter. Copper will take it into the front court. Right corner to Beery. Barry will drive in, backing his way in, stripped by Rumford in a steal. Turnover number 13, Rumford pulls it back at one on four numbers, now he'll launch the three and why not? He has seven in the quarter and it's 45-23 with 3.53 to go third stanza. Another Scott City three to go third quarter and Scott City's open up a 22 point lead now 45-23. They'll get a screen right side for Allen, he'll just launch the three over Ricks Bailey and Rumford. And then the ball will be thrown away in an unforced Scott City error. For the game for the Blue Jays, number 25, Logan Heddleston. Logan Heddleston in for Sem Ron to replace Zach Lopez with 329 here in the third. Forty-five to twenty-three, twenty-two point Scott City lead. Simron with the ball. Fifteen turnovers tonight on Scott City. That's probably one of the rough uh, Stats of the game tonight. With it is Samuel Allen, right side to Beery. At the block, nice pass underneath. Pump fake got Rumford up, did Whitman scored and won for Whitman his fourth point, 45 25 with 3 11 to go, third quarter. So Rumford with the second foul, team's third of the half, 45 25, 3 11 here in the third. Whitman, four of six at the line this year. He has four tonight coming off the bench. He had four also in the first meeting, and he can go past that, and he does. 45-26. 
3-11 here in the third, and that's going to be a blocking foul, and that'll be on Trace Copper. That's going to be his third. Team second of the half with 3-10 to go here in the third quarter. Inbound in to Rumford. He goes by a couple. Now he almost gets it poked away. Drives in. Lob under. Oh, that was a predetermined offensive foul on Jackson. I don't know if that was that exciting of an offensive foul, but Jackson Rumford with his third. 3.05 to go third quarter. As stage, Steckline will check in for him. Fourth team foul. That almost felt like that Copper was falling back before there was even contact. And now Avery Noel with the steal. He'll drive in. No foul on that. Metzger with a follow. He has seven. 47-26 with 2.54 to go third quarter. So Scott City forced the Blue Jays into their 14th turnover. Copper with it and a timeout for Coach Chris Chilton. And Simron will take it as well. 2.48 here third quarter. Scott City leads 47-26. Back in a minute, this is Scott City Beaver basketball. With over 10 years of experience, Jamie at JW Enterprise can repair your windshield quickly and conveniently. Even if you don't have time to make it to the shop, Jamie can fix your windshield from your home or he can come get your vehicle for you. JW Enterprise is insured and Safe Flight certified. He might be operating under a different name, but Jamie still provides the same quality of service. Let Jamie at JW Enterprise fix that chip in your windshield now. Find JW Enterprise on Facebook or give him a call at 785-785. 47-26. We're back to action out of the Cimarron timeout with 2.48 to go, third period of play. Out of the timeout, Scott City in a man-to-man. -man. Trace Copper with it, pulls up just inside the arc. Now to Larius Pepper, who's back in the game. He'll drive to the foul line. Good defense by Noel. Right side to Whitman with two and a half to go here in the third. Underneath, shot, bank shot too strong that time by Whitman and the rebound to Scott City. Here's Avery Noel on the run. He'll take it all the way, pulls up, Hank shoots and scores. Man, that was nifty. 49-26 with 2.20 to go third quarter, and Scott City with their largest lead at 23. They've slowly grown this lead here in the third quarter after they're up by 16 at the break, and now up by 23 as we approach two minutes to go third period. Cimarron laid this 18 to 13 in after one and they turned the ball over. Scott City with it, Avery Noel running point here. He'll go down underneath the stack line. Pump fakes, hangs, bank shot, yes, he's got his first two. Varsity points and it's 51-26 with a minute 50 to go third quarter. Trap in the backcourt by Scott City as they've got the route on here in this third quarter. Alec Whitman with it. Now up top, here's Barry open for three and that is short, rebound to Avery Noel. Noel with his fifth board of the night. 90 seconds here in the third. 25 points, Scott City lead. Noel handed off to Metzger. Up top to Steckline. Ah, shoot it. Lawson Bailey thought about it, but quickly guarded. He'll drive left baseline on Beery. He'll go up and one. And Bailey with nine. He has a chance for double figures. 53-26. A 13-2 run for Scott City over the last three minutes with 119 to go. Third quarter as Beery picks up foul number four. 1.19 to go third period, third team foul for Cimarron as Beery will check out. Trent Briggs back in for Cimarron. Dylan Duff back in to replace Dylan Metzger. So Dylan for Dylan. And Bailey trying to become the second Beaver tonight in double figures if he can hit this free throw. And he does. 54-26. A 14-2 run over the last two minutes and 58 seconds for Scott City. And that's still not their biggest run of the night. Minute 15 to go. Their biggest run was a 27 to two run in the late first and second quarters. Minute eight to go in this third quarter. Left side, it goes to Larius Pepper. Pepper will pull it out, crossover dribble, final minute, and then Brooks Bailey steps in front of the pass and intercepts it. 
16th turnover and a whistle and a foul. That'll be on Briggs' his first. Fourth Blue Jay foul this second half. Both teams now with four fouls here in the second half of play. 56.7 here in the third. Oh, inbound in up top to stack line here. Now to Brooks Bailey, Duff, left corner. And it goes to Tarango. He looks to penetrate. He'll scoop and draw the foul. He is just so shifty underneath their uses of speed. And they're going to give him two free throws. And it'll be David Mendez, his second, fourth of the half. Make that fifth of the half on Cimarron. And Tarango with four tonight. 56% free throw shooter. Yes, that'll crawl in. 55-26. 47 seconds here in this third. We got another free throw here, and it's good. It's a 30-point game. Hopefully that means running clock fourth quarter. 56-26 your score. 40 seconds left in the third. David Mendez. I did not want to say it would be a 30-point running clock in the fourth quarter before he attempted that last free throw. I didn't want to jinx him. Briggs with it out high. 28 seconds to go, third period. Pass past the Larius Pepper, guarded by Camden Volgamore. Now back up top. They go left to screen here for Briggs. They'll drive left baseline. Good job by Bricks Bailey, forcing him to the left baseline and almost ran out of real estate, but they're going to go out of the bump on Bailey, his first. So the second five in for Scott City right now, other than, or four of the five, I should say, are non-starters. Trango, the lone non-starter, inbound up top. And the left corner, here's a three. Too strong that time for Briggs, misses everything, and a follow-up no by Pepper. And the foul will be on Dylan Duff is first. Six Scott City foul here with 14 seconds here in this third quarter. Larius Pepper is 44% at the line. Hits that. He has his third point, 56-27, with 14.2 to go, third quarter. So 11 fouls already in this third quarter combined. Six on Scott, five for Cimarron. Free throw number two is good for Pepper as well. Cimarron has shot all seven of their free throws in the third quarter. They're six of seven, 56-28. In the backcourt now, the front court to Tarango with eight seconds. He'll pull it back out with six. With five seconds now, looks to drive right side. Tried to flip his step, step line, deflected. And now Brooks Bailey, his layup is blocked. And that's the end of your third quarter. Cimarron only two rebounds in that third quarter. They only have six for the game. 56-28, the Beavers have doubled up the Blue Jays by 28 as we head to the fourth. Back in a minute, this is Beaver basketball. Feedyard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feedyard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. Scott City basketball to begin the fourth quarter at a 28 point game. They've led by as many as 30, 56, 28. Glad to have you back here at Cimarron. Scott City trailed by nine in the first quarter. They've led by as many as 30 in this game. The alley hoop lob. Jackson Rumford couldn't quite get there. And the rebound goes to Cimarron. Mendez with it. And then a steal. Here's Rumford. He's already got one duck. He'll just lay it up for his 24th point and one. Just a little ho-hum layup on the right side with the harm. 58-28 with 7.34 to go. And now the running clock. Trent Briggs with his second. 16 foul. Off the 17th Blue Jay turnover, Scott City 12 of 14 and 13 of 15 at the line and a 25-point performance for Rumford, 59-28 with 7.15 to go. So Rumford has 
His last two Fridays, he's had 27 and 25 points. And we have a line change on both sides. Scott City will bring in Coy Vance, Camden Volgamore, Brendan Bailey in for the first time, also uh, Brooks Bailey in, and uh, Dylan Duff. Scott, or Tr Trace Copper in, also Lane Beery, Samuel Allen, Alec Whitman, and Zach Lopez in for Cimarron. So you have all seniors pretty much for the Blue Jays on the floor instead of... Uh, Exception to Copper, who's a sophomore. Barry will square up for a three. He's short, but the rebound for Allen. He'll go up and miss it. Rebound. Last touch, they'll say, by Scott City with 6.33 to go. Cimarron led by Trace Copper with 10 points. Inbound in. Almost stolen away. They're going to get a foul on Coy Vance. That'll be his first seventh team foul. One and one time coming up for the Blue Jays. Running clock, fourth quarter, 6-10 to go, 59-28. I don't want to beat the dead horse anymore, but it's just hard to fathom that Scott City was down 18-9 with 1.30 to go first quarter. They closed the first quarter out with four in a row. Whitman with the free throw. He's two for two at the line tonight. He has four, or make that six, 59-29, 5.50 to go. But, yeah, Scott City, when they were down 18-9, it's the second free throw is missed, and Camden Vogelmore collects his first board of the night. They were down 18-9 and went on a 22-0 run in the first and second quarter. It ended up being a 27-2 run when it was all said and done to go up 36-20 at the break. We had about a 23-minute halftime. They had their winter homecoming festivities. 5.25 to go. Here is a layup for Brendan Bailey, and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws. Alec Whitman with now four fouls, 5.18 to go, and seventh Blue Jay foul. Bailey, eh, 0 for 2 at the line this year in varsity play. Still looking for his first varsity points. Scott City got Sage Steckline his first varsity points. Brendan short on that one. The Beavers are now 13 of 16 at the line. Cimarron is 7 of 9. Free throw for Brendan. Yes! Welcome to the Varsity Scoring Club. 60 to 29 with 4.44 to go. And the crowd behind the Scott City Benz yells loudly there. Still one more maybe to come in for Scott City. He's sent by Coach Gentry. We'll see. Entry feed in to Zach Lopez. Trapped. Now back up top to Beery. He'll drive in and almost stolen away. Almost walked there as well. And now Allen pump fakes on the three. 4.23 to go. 60 to 29. Copper quickly guarded by Duff, otherwise he would have taken that three. Now pivots in the paint. Copper can't get that shot to go. Rebound tipped and in the hands of Lane Beery for Cimarron. Copper was held to seven points in the first quarter and only three field goals. Backing his way in. Whitman and a whistle and a push. Coy Vance his second foul. Team's eighth and one and one coming up here for Whitman who is two or three at the line and has six off the bench. And Coach Chris Chenton will send some more, but hey, we got a debut member for Scott City on the court. It's going to be Griffin Edwards, a sophomore, in for the first time in his varsity career. As he'll check in for the first time, Duff exits. Simran will have four to check in. Whitman, the first of two free throws, is good. He'll get the bonus. 60-30, 3.27 left as it's a running clock here in this fourth quarter. They brought in Larius Pepper, also Logan Heddleston. Second free throw, short rebound, and Edwards has his first varsity board. Volgamore up top, two at Griffin Edwards, finds Coy Vance cutting his layup. Oh, it spins in. Vance with a little English, 62-30 with three minutes to go. Right side to Larius Pepper, right baseline, the short corner to Heddleston, and a timeout, a 30-second timeout with 2.53 to go. Basketball presented here by Spencer Pesca, Charles State Farm Insurance, Original Grande, Stevens Veterinary Services, Tripac North America, True North Cafe, Turner Sheet Metal, Volgamore Family Farms, Western Kansas Insurance, Western State Bank, Wheatland Electric, White's Food Liner, and Winterland Farms. 32nd timeout with 2.53 left. 62 to 30 for Scott City. So they're going to snap that three game losing streak, and they'll have Hayes High, a very athletic team, coming into town Tuesday. 
We'll have a little bit more on that in our hopefully our post-game interview with Coach Brian Gentry. And Cimarron will have the ball out of the timeout here. Said Larius Pepper, also Logan Heddleston. Trent Briggs, also in for the first time, Gail Cardiola, a 5'5 junior, and Cade Sande. And Cimarron throws it away, their 18th mistake of the night here with 2.45 to go on a running clock, fourth quarter. 62-30 is their score. And now the next goal for Scott City, get Griffin Edwards a basket. To be his first varsity points. Bailey to Bailey, that's Brendan Bailey to Brooks. He'll drive right baseline. Now trying to get it to Camden Volgamore, and it's thrown away. Turnover number 11 on Scott City. In transition, here comes Pepper. He'll throw one up, and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws. With 2.17 to go, and all that does with the stop, it just burn more time off the clock and get this game ended a little quicker. Foul on Brendan Bailey, his first. Teams... All right, we back. apologize for the technical issues. 62-31, Pepper hit one out of two free throws there as we are down to under 90 seconds to go. And a three in the left corner for Coy Vance. He has a career high five, 65-31, 117 to go. As uh, Scott, Scott City extends their lead out to 34 with the final minute of this one. So Coy Vance with the three, right baseline jumper, no for Sande. And Vance grabbed a rebound for Scott City. And they'll throw it away with their 12th turnover of the night here with 56 seconds to go. 65-31, Scott City with the lead. Right now they're on the pace for the third fewest points given up this year and their third highest point total. They scored 66 in back-to-back -back games over Coronado and Liberal and 69 against Lions. 35 seconds left, Cardiel with the dribble. He'll drive in and take it all the way. He'll lay it up, miss it, rebound Coy Vance, his second board of the night. Vance with it with 28 seconds to go. And let's see if they try to get this one to Griffin Edwards. Bailey, and he's fouled, and that'll, oh, they're gonna call it travel, excuse me, beforehand. With 18 seconds left. <laughs> Has 65 31. Now let this one finish out here, looks like. Cardiel. And then it goes left block. Backing his way in, flipping it up short for Sande. Rebound, follow. No, and that's it. Scott City with a big win here on the road. 65 31. The Beavers are now 7 and 7 on the year, 1 and 1 in the league. Cimarron drops to 3 and 9 on the year, and they're 0 and 2 in the conference. Post game to begin after this three minute break. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. United Wireless believes in delivering value to their customers and supporting our local communities. United... <laughs>